the committee's report on CIA torture, the CIA themselves began an internal report to anticipate arguments made by the committee. Now, this report was mistakenly included in some 6 million pages of classified records that were given to the committee for their investigation. Vice News filed a FOIA request to obtain the report, but a lawyer with the CIA claimed the documents were intended for CIA eyes only and are exempt from FOIA disclosure. President Obama officially signed an executive order Thursday that will establish a task force for reviewing law enforcement practices. Obama first announced the panel last month and will give them until March 2nd to present a list of recommendations. The president had previously announced the co-chair of the panel would be Philadelphia Police Chief Charles Ramsey. In addition to the panel, there's also a White House review on police militarization expected to be released soon. On Thursday, the attorney generals of Oklahoma and Nebraska filed a lawsuit in the U.S. Supreme Court, arguing that Colorado's legal cannabis industry violates the Constitution. Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt said the states surrounding Colorado are unable to enforce their state's policy against cannabis because of Colorado's recently passed Amendment 64. The suit says the new law violates the Supremacy Clause of the Constitution, which gives federal law precedence over state law. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Bean is brought to you by Marjorie Wildcrafts Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, visit TheLibertyBeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, December 19th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. Austin, Texas Liberty activist and conscious hip-hop artist Mark Jenkins is producing an online program about police brutality and police accountability activism. The show, titled Watching You, Watching Me, will be in a format similar to TV's Tosh.0, where the host gives commentary and shows highlights of online videos. Know Your Rights Trainings, Corrupt Cop of the Month, and Prison Watch are just a few of the segments that will be featured on the program. Mark Jenkins says the goal of the project is to educate people on their constitutional rights and to show them how to fight back against the oppressors. Jenkins has launched a GoFundMe campaign to help raise funds for the project. He's also selling Watching You, Watching Me swag, such as shirts and hoodies, a promo CD, and other apparel. An international architecture studio has unveiled a concept for a retirement community in Singapore, which would promote an active lifestyle and on-site farming. Spark has said the home farm is designed to generate discussion about the many potentials of combining urban farming with senior living. 20% of Singapore's population is expected to be 65 and older by 2030. With a reported 90% of Singapore's food imported, the nation is struggling to find ways to sustainably feed an aging population. The community would offer opportunity for growing vegetables in a variety of designs. Residents would not be forced to work to live in the community, but could offset costs by contributing work. The Liberty Bean is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern. Join Corey Moore and his co-hosts as they tackle the topics of the day. The Corey Moore Show, Friday nights at 10 at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, December 19, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. A cool guy from middle school is still sporting his fat pair of jinkos. A stunned St. Peter's Square crowd hears the Pope getting bitched out by God. And an eighth grader caked in makeup is probably really confident. This is The Onion Week in Review. This week, a Pew Research Center poll found that the vast majority of Americans would watch a television show called Love Trap, with most saying that regardless of the show's genre or quality, they would tune in weekly to see its stars stumble into romantic triangles, double-cross one another, and contend with whatever the titular Love Trap refers to. The survey confirmed that 62% of Americans would likely watch Love Trap to see a shrewd but cold-hearted Southern Belle named Tammy. 23% of the nation hoped the show would be referred to as The Trap by its most loyal fans. And 15% of respondents said they simply needed something to watch. And in this week's science news, a biologist completes a five-minute study of the pathetic organism in his mirror. In other news, a man confidently hits send on the worst job application a company has ever seen. This is the Onion News Network.
This is Free Talk Live. Welcome to the program. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. And just a heads up to our board operator, we are getting some talk back. We're hearing ourselves back in our own headphones like a few seconds later or a second later. And it's a little distracting, so I'm turning it down. Anyway, welcome to the show. It's Ian here with you. And Danica. And Daryl. Uh, lots to talk about in the news, of course. And you're welcome to bring up anything you'd like at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And there's pretty big news out of uh, the Washington, D.C., and it's actually what I consider to be pretty good news about yes. Cuba. Now, apparently, there's been some sort of a declaration or a proclamation made by uh, Barack Obama this week that full diplomatic relations with Cuba will be restored. And they will actually be opening an embassy in Havana for the first time in more than half a century. Um, and there's more details to the story. Uh, the, the claim is that Obama is vowing to cut loose the shackles of the past and sweep aside one of the last vestiges of the Cold War. The surprise announcement came at the end of 18 months of secret talks that produced a prisoner swap negotiated with the help of Pope Francis and concluded by a telephone call between Mr. Obama and President Raul Castro. The historic deal broke an enduring stalemate between two countries divided by just 90 miles of water, but oceans of mistrust and hostility dating from the days of Theodore Roosevelt's charge up San Juan Hill and the nuclear brinkmanship of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, Obama said in a nationally televised statement, quote, We will end an outdated approach that for decades has failed to advance our interests and instead will begin to normalize relations between our two countries. Your reactions, guys. What do you think about this? Oh, I think it's great. And hopefully the immigration policy doesn't wind up getting changed drastically. Because, Which policy? Well, right now there's what they call the wet foot, dry foot policy that applies to any immigrant from Cuba. And it's unlike the immigration policy that the U.S. has for the rest of the world. The rest of the world, there's all sorts of bureaucratic hoops and hurdles to jump through. Mm -hmm. But anyone that can get here safely from Cuba gets to stay. No hoops, no hurdles. So what I fear is that you know people that wish to come here from Cuba from now on are going to have bureaucratic hoops and hurdles to jump through, and they're not going to be able to get here. Yeah, it certainly opens up to that. I also think it's a great thing because... You know, while Cuba may have been under, you know, less than ideal circumstances, uh, it's great that they're, you know, I, I believe it was the U.S. that was reaching out, or was it Cuba that reached out to us to try and negotiate um, this? I'm not sure who started it, but it's, again, it says here it's been something like 18 months. 18 months. months mm -hmm. uh, the Vatican and Canada were apparently facilitating the talks. Yeah, I think it's great that they're trying to step outside of it and look to establish good relations, not just with us, but with you know, everybody. Well, again, it's not necessarily us. We're not the government, sure. right? So um, I have no relations with Cuba's official state, just like I prefer not to have any relations with the U.S. state either. But between two what, what I consider to be criminal gangs, uh, and somebody on my Facebook profile was trying to convince me that uh, you know, Cuba's so much worse than the United States as far as its government is concerned— uh, the idea being that, well, you know, you wouldn't be free to do your radio show if you were in Cuba. And while that might be true, I also pointed out that the United States has the most uh, prison population of the entire world. Absolutely. More yes. people in prison than any other country in the world. And so, you know, it's just a difference in degrees as far as the difference between the U.S. Right. government and uh, the Cuban government. But if these two criminal gangs can come to some kind of an agreement that will allow for more interactions of the Cuban people and the people in the United States, then I think that's a good thing. I don't really care about a, you know them building some sort of uh, diplomatic outpost there, and I'm not really concerned with uh, their little prisoner swap or whatever. But if, if they're actually going to loosen the restrictions on people being able to travel, and they're— 
they're not they're not going to get rid of the travel prohibition at this point and they're, the the article goes into that a little bit further but they'll be loosening up on certain categories of who can travel to and Cuba and also they're going to loosen up the economic sanctions that have been placed on Cuba for the last right. half century to where hopefully the people down in Cuba will not still be driving around in like 1952 Ford, whatever it is. Yeah, they've got some. It's a, it's a bad situation down there. There's no doubt. But things have been changing. I think from what you know, from what little we've read here, uh, after Fidel Castro le- left, died, I guess, and uh, Raúl Castro took over. Right. Um, there have been some reforms, though maybe we might consider them mild. Uh, the reforms have been meaningful, I think, to Cuban people, like being able to decide what crops to grow, at least on a portion of your land. Right. That's a big deal, like before it was all dictated by the state. But at the same time, the U.S. government has still been blocking shipments of, you know, different goods down to Cuba. So now the Cuban people are actually going to be able to possibly get cell phones. U.S. cell phone providers are going to be able to offer service in Cuba. You've seen that specifically? That yes, that's the case. That's awesome. Um, that's really exciting. And of course, you know, cell phones, uh, the ability to communicate can dramatically change uh, what happens in a place as far as information getting around, the ideas of freedom getting around. And to me, that's the real value of this in allowing people because there's this mindset that uh, and I guess maybe it's like a conservative thing. I don't really know this. There's a mindset that's th- against this. That says this is a terrible thing. The Republicans are all up in arms, and I've seen stories that John Boehner and Mitch McConnell have vowed that they're going to try to stop this from happening when uh, they take over in January. But whether or not they're able to actually get something that would have a a veto-proof majority is another question. Yeah, it's so yeah, bad giving uh, you know people these modern things such as cell phones and better cars because oh they might start thinking, and that would be bad. Well, I, I think the viewpoint of the Republicans is not that it's that, uh, or at least those that I've heard from. Maybe there are some per- freedom oriented Republicans out there who have an opinion about this, but the ones that are shouting the loudest about this are the ones saying, "Well, oh, Cubans are bad. Cuba's a bad place. It's bad, and we need to cut them off." Keep it, keep them cut off. You, you, and that's just the, the mentality. Is you, that, you should not give in to those evil, evil communists. Yeah. You, you should not let them win. And if we cut off the embargo and if we restore diplomatic relations, then the Cubans have won the mm. Cold War. <laughs> I'd say that about sums up the attitude that I've heard expressed. I mean, maybe not those explicit words. Uh, are being said, but uh, not that I've seen at least. And if you have an opinion about this, I'd love to hear from you, especially if you are somebody that thinks this is a bad idea. Obviously, we're all in agreement on the show tonight, and that doesn't always happen here on Free Talk Live. But uh, if you feel like the Cuban government and by proxy, the Cuban people should be prevented from doing business with people in the United States, which is what's been the case thus far in our lifetimes, prevented from traveling, U.S. people uh, prevented from traveling to Cuba and vice versa. If you think those things should remain in place and you can make somewhat of a coherent argument for it, I'd really love to hear from you. Because to me, it's not about punishing the Cuban government. These sanctions or whatever you want to call them, the restrictions, travel restrictions, business restrictions, they're punishing the Cuban people. And believe it or not, not everybody agrees with their governments. Right. So there's right. a lot of people in Cuba who probably don't like being ruled by uh, Raul Castro and his cronies. They're probably afraid to speak out about it. But the people exist. that do speak out wind up getting thrown in jail. Yeah. Those people exist, though. They, they do exist. Mm. And I'm glad that there are people brave enough in such a tyrannical place to speak out. So I, want- I, I hate what happens to them for doing it. But I'm, you know, it just sort of you know lifts my spirits knowing that there are people brave enough to you know have the courage to speak out in the face of a government that is that tyrannical so if you think that loosening restrictions and maybe ultimately eliminating them allowing anyone to travel there for instance uh loosening restrictions is a bad idea when regard in regards to cuba the toll-free number 
is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It's Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kid's education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. We have lots of features on the site. We give them away to you. You can actually go there and create the content on the front page at freetalklive.com and vote up what you like vote down what you don't at freetalklive.com. With you tonight, it's Ian here. Danica. And Daryl. 
Tis the season for Sherry's Berries. You can get delicious, freshly dipped strawberries dipped in chocolate of three different types. There's white chocolate, dark chocolate, and milk chocolate. Dipped in chocolate chips, decorative swizzle, or nuts. And they are available and delicious. They are starting at just $19.99. That's over 40% savings. You can also double the berries for just $10 more. And trust me, you will want to double the berries. Uh, it's really, you're going to want to have more of these berries rather than fewer berries. So the more you out. have, the more you eat, and the more you eat, the better they taste. Well, and the more you can share if you uh, if you also have them because people... Oh, be, right. You're supposed to share oh, them. Oh, yeah. It'll, sharing is caring. It would be very rude to eat Sherry's berries in front of someone else and not offer them one of these amazing treats. So go to berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. You still have enough time to get these in before Christmas, uh, but you probably shouldn't wait too much longer. Berries.com. Click the microphone in the top right-hand corner and type in FTL to get the special deal of the berries starting at just $19.99 and double the berries for $10 more. Again, that's berries.com. It's the perfect gift without the hassle. Sherry's Berries. Berries.com. Code is FTL for the special offer. Our toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREAK. Restrictions being loosened on Cuba. I'm just wondering, who would possibly oppose this? Apparently, there are a number of people in the, sort of on the right, whatever that means. Who there, are there's even this. a Democrat that has come out against it. Uh, Robert Menendez from New Jersey apparently is outraged that the sanctions are being lifted. Apparently, he just wants to continue punishing these poor Cuban people who for decades have been unable to have any meaningful interaction with people in the United States. Right. And that means that, uh, I mean, if you wanted to visit Cuba, you have to first travel out of the United States and then go to Cuba, as I understand yes. it. And, uh, and it's just a huge hassle, and you can't do any business with anybody in Cuba. And to me, if you can't do business with and you can't visit the folks in Cuba and vice versa, then that means that if, if products and, uh, and people are not crossing borders, then ideas are also not crossing. And if we want the Cuban people to have a revolution against the communists or whatever it is that people might want them to do— then they have to have those ideas, right? They have to be able to get new ideas into their minds. And if you know, if all your all that happens in your life is you're raised in a communist school system, as you could argue that we are here in the United States, uh, raised in like a socialist school system. If you're raised in the government system and you're taught what the government wants you to know, then you have to encounter someone else who's going to give you other ideas. I'm not saying those ideas don't exist in Cuba. Obviously, there are people who don't appreciate uh, the Castro brothers and their, you know people uh, but it wouldn't hurt for for people from the united states to be able to interact with these folks and share right. our ideas with them I what's just wrong don't, with that right and i just don't understand how people are in support of you know punishing a country that you know the, the citizens had no control over what was going on well that's just it the punishment does punish the average people more so than the government it's not yeah. like it's not like raul castro is over there starving to death because of the, the sanctions uh placed on the country by the united states he's doing just fine he's sitting right. pretty he's eating everything he could ever want because you know him and his party brethren are in charge and the people who are in charge in any nation are always fed very very well it's yes. the average people that are having a tough time but what is it that some of the uh, talk show hosts are saying about this? Because right now, not a single person has called to oppose the de-escalation of conflict between Cuba and the United States. And that's what I considered sanctions to be, is essentially it's you know war without bullets being fired. Right. Michael Savage, according to an article over at WND.com, who is our competition... Uh, on well, no, I guess not anymore. He's live in afternoons. Now. He's kind of competition because still some th there are a lot of stations that take him later. So uh, this is a summary from World Net Daily, which is kind of a righty website, from what I understand. Uh, Savage. Uh, summary here. After Obama lifted the half-century-long embargo against Cuba, Savage wonders what other foreign policy surprises the president has up his sleeve. What will happen next? Savage wondered. Are they going to lift sanctions on North Korea in a week or two while you're celebrating Christmas? Well, so what if they do? What would be so wrong with that? 
I mean, if if you were to lift sanctions on North Korea, it might suggest that maybe there is some level of independent ability in North Korea at that point to actually have interactions with people outside of the United States. If there were such a thing as private businesses in North Korea, and I don't have any evidence that those things exist outside of the black market— then that would, you know, that would be a good sign. I don't think it'd be a bad thing to raise uh, to remove restrictions on North Korea. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, if you know, like you said, if there was a way for an independent individual or business to operate outside of that and be able to establish those kinds of sanctions, I mean, that's that's a step in the in the right direction for for freedom. We well, don't want to establish sanctions. I don't know if you well, misspoke no, no, there. Not really sanctions, sanctions are, but just you know, just communication, just an open line. Right, relations. Sanctions are where you prohibit. Sanctions are things that the government puts on an, another country to right, prohibit I them I from doing spoke. things. I, me- I meant to say relations. I mean, I, I can't see how anything bad would come. I, I know every, I know lots of people have been clouded by just the, you know, the horrible atrocities that do happen inside North Korea. But well, somebody who op- opposes that might say that, well, Danica, that if you left, lift sanctions on North Korea, that's just going to empower Kim Jong Un. It's going to make it so he has more that uh, he can take more wealth uh, from people and it's just going to empower the regime. That he could, you know, get all kinds of things for himself that he doesn't he have. He already gets all kinds of things yeah, for himself. He lets but millions of worse? people starve. Couldn't it be worse, though? Wouldn't he just steal more food from his people if they could get food from the United States? What food? Well, <laughs> lifting sanctions and shipping things to them are two different things. You know, just because you lift sanctions doesn't mean that you then automatically start sending, you know, tr- uh, tanker boats full of supplies to the country. Somebody has to say, we want to buy your goods, and then you send it. But just to sort of put Michael Savage at ease, the sanctions or... The sanctions have not been the, lifted. The, the sanctions on Cuba, you know, they they... Are kind of being lifted. The you know just because diplomatic relations are being restored doesn't yeah. mean all sanctions are going away. And also, I wish it did, but no, it I, I wish it did Congress too. Congress is required to act in order to remove the embargo. But there's also been some sanctions added to Venezuela. Oh, so Lou. just you know because he thinks, oh, we're restoring diplomatic relations with Cuba. What are what are we going to do next? You know, make. Kim Jong Un, the you know ambassador of so, you know, Earth. So one step forward, one, one step, step forward, one step backwards. Uh, you're welcome to share your thoughts here. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. We'll give you some more summaries of what people are saying about this, and I want to get into a little bit more detail on what's going to happen. Plus. Daryl, you've got a related story about the biggest losers yes. in this Cuba deal. Who's really going to get hurt uh, by this? 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And I believe it's satire, right? Uh, somewhat. All right, we'll get into that. Your calls and thoughts welcome. You can take control of the airwaves here. Coming up, the uh, founder of Bit Instant sentenced to prison. We'll tell you about it. It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. (coughs) But don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA four-herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain, normally $26.95, now just $20. Herbalhealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. 
It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options, even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at Let'sFixDinner.com. To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com. And enjoy the features that are waiting for you there over at freetalklive.com. You can also enjoy, not at, not at our website, but over at infreedomscause.com, you can get a teaser of this brand new piece of audio theater. It's in over two hours in running time. It's almost like an audio movie played out on the screen of your mind with actors you might recognize, like Joanne Froggett of Downton Abbey, Billy Boyd of Lord of the Rings, Skandar Keen's Chronicles of Narnia, and James Cosmo, who was in Braveheart. It's called In Freedom's Cause, and it's one of the greatest stories of the struggle for freedom in recorded history, the story of William Wallace. Yes, it's like Braveheart, but only historically accurate. And the kids in your life will love this. Uh, it's got a study guide and it's a real crash course in the struggle for freedom. Great time to pick them up at a discount with code FTL. You can get a family four-pack of CDs. That means, this, by the way, it's a two-CD set, so the four-pack would be eight uh, CDs. And uh, so that gives you four copies of In Freedom's Cause to give away to your loved ones or friends. Uh, InFreedomsCause.com, coupon code FTL, gets you 50% off the family four pack. Again, that's InFreedomsCause.com. I have listened, and the audio quality is very good. The acting's great, the sound effects are fantastic, and the, the music was actually originally created for uh, this production, which is, is pretty great because the music's amazing as well. InFreedomsCause.com, coupon code FTL. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Back to the New York Times to give us a little bit more information about what exactly is going on in Washington, D.C. with these loosening of the restrictions on Cuba. It's not a total removal of the restrictions. Uh, Obama has ventured into diplomatic territory where the last 10 presidents have refused to go. And Republicans, along with the senior Democrat, quickly characterized the repro rapprochement with the Castro family as appeasement of the hemisphere's leading dictatorship. 
Republican lawmakers who take control of the Senate as well as the House next month made clear they would resist lifting that 54-year-old trade embargo. According to Senator Marco Rubio from Florida, he says, quote, This entire policy shift announced today is based on an illusion, on a lie. The lie and the illusion that more commerce and access to money and goods will translate into political freedom for the Cuban people. He says all this is going to do is give the Castro regime, which controls every aspect of Cuban life, the opportunity to manipulate these changes to perpetuate itself in power. And what's funny is Marco Polo Rubio is one of these guys that, you know, claims to support freedom. You know, people have labeled him a libertarian because he's got ties to the Tea Party that Ridiculous. was somehow labeled libertarian because Glenn Beck and Sarah Palin. And one would think that, you know, if you actually are a libertarian, that you would support more economic freedom and not say for that everyone for yeah. everyone and not say the ridiculous things of, well, if we give them economic freedom, then they're just going to get more oppressed. It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, wh- yeah. wh- where could that possibly make sense? How besides just being this uh, thoughtless talking point, does that actually logically connect to anything at all? Well, it makes sense in the minds of Republicans that just want to punish people that aren't Republicans. Punish poor people around the world who basically are victims of Raul Castro. Punish them further. Allow them to continue to be victimized. How it is that more economic freedom and more freedom to travel would impoverish people further is just so crazy to me. Having more economic freedom would open up the doors that would allow people such as us to actually see what's going on. We can right. st- and we can step in and say, hey, that's not right. What you're doing is not right. All this is going to do, he says, is give them more control. For good or ill, back to the New York Times here, the move represented a dramatic turning point in relations with an island that for generations has captivated and vexed its giant northern neighbor from the 18th century the uh, when successive presidents coveted it, Cuba loomed large in the American imagination before long before Fidel Castro stormed from the mountains and seized power in 1959. His alliance with the Soviet Union made Cuba a geopolitical flashpoint in a global struggle of ideology and power. President Dwight Eisenhower imposed the first trade embargo in 1960 and broke off diplomatic relations in January of 1961, just weeks before leaving office and seven months before Obama was born. Under John Kennedy, the failed Bay of Pigs operation aimed at toppling Castro in 1961 and the 13-day showdown over Soviet missiles installed in Cuba the following year cemented its status as ground zero in the Cold War. But the relationship remained frozen in time, long after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the collapse of the Soviet Union, a thorn in the side of multiple presidents who waited for Mr. Castro's demise and experienced false hope when he passed power to his brother Raul. Even as the United States built relations with communist nations like China and Vietnam, Cuba remained one of just a few nations, along with Iran and North Korea, that had no formal ties with Washington. Obama has long expressed hope of transforming relations with Cuba and relaxed some travel restrictions in 2011, but further moves remained untenable as long as Cuba held Alan P. Gross, an American government contractor, arrested in 2009 and sentenced to 15 years in a Cuban prison for trying to deliver satellite telephone equipment capable of cloaking connections to the Internet. After winning re-election, he resolved, Mr. Obama, uh, resolved to make Cuba a priority for his second term. And so uh, he apparently authorized secret negotiations that conducted nine meetings with Cuban counterparts dating, uh, starting in June of 2013, most of them in Canada. And apparently uh, the Pope was involved in encouraging these talks. There apparently was, you know, a phone call between Castro and Obama, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And on Wednesday morning, Mr. Gross walked out of a Cuban prison and boarded an American military plane that flew him to Washington, accompanied by his wife, Judy. So, you know, they let this guy go. And I guess the United States let a few people go as well. Uh, they let, uh, in fact, three imprisoned Cuban spies uh, let them out who were caught in 1998. They'd become a cause celebre for the Habana government. They were swapped for Rolando Saraf Trujillo, a Cuban who had worked as an agent for American intelligence and had been in a Cuban prison for nearly 20 years. 
According to a senior American official, Mr. Gross was technically not part of that swap, but he was released separately on humanitarian grounds, a distinction that critics found unpersuasive. So what's going to happen? Well, the United States will ease restrictions on remittances, travel, and banking, while Cuba will allow more Internet access and release 53 Cubans identified as political prisoners by the United States. Although the embargo will unfortunately remain in place, the president called for an honest and serious debate about lifting it, which would require an act of Congress, which unfortunately is about to be taken over by the Republicans, who will not be likely to be interested in talking about that. And I have to wonder how much of this, and by this I mean the Republican opposition to the lifting of the embargo i i have to wonder how much of that is due to just not wanting to be seen as agreeing with democrats because it seems as yeah. though on a lot of issues the republican position is the complete opposite of the democrat position regardless of what the issue is mm. and if one party changes its position then the other party flips the position just so that they can be the opposite. Yeah, it does seem to always happen like that, doesn't it? And unfortunately, as a result of that, um, people may continue to be oppressed as a result. You know, you right. can't you can't travel to Cuba. Hey, wait a minute. I thought this was a free country. Don't the Republicans talk about freedom a lot? I mean, look, I'm not— Right, a, but no, this country's free. Cuba's not, so you can't go there. I'm not in love with the Democrats. I want to make it clear. I, I, I don't think that they are good for the United States either. I'm not a fan of the Republicans. Uh, but in this case, they're on the right side of the issue. I mean, that's— Look, Obama is very much like George W. Bush as far as I'm concerned. Yes. I, I mean, I consider him to be George Bush the third. But, I consider him to be the 57th term of George Washington. Well, there's that's another way to look at it. Um, he's not a, a good guy. He's a warmonger. He has you know, been responsible for the, the killings of countless individuals around the world. I have no, not very many praises to sing about Barack Obama, but in this case, he's, he's actually, done the right thing. He's doing a good thing. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. For all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. And there's 60% off. Plus, personalized one-of-a-kind gifts are also to 60% off. It's our best deal of the season. But hurry, offer ends December 7th. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to Vistaprint.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code RADIO60. Vistaprint.com, code RADIO, the word 60. Are you? searching for your soulmate someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the nsa stop searching with easy dns you found a keeper easy dns does it all domain names web hosting and managed wordpress hosting easy dns stands up for your internet freedom and with servers in canada they do not cooperate with the nsa go to easydns.com you'll love their services or get a full refund they guarantee it and they accept bitcoin that's easydns.com the experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Do you know the difference between erudite and pedantic? If you do, you're probably pedantic. But seriously, a surprising number of erudite people mispronounce erudite, which has three syllables, not four. Say erudite, not erudite. 
because you are judged by how you speak, you want to avoid common misstatements, especially if you're a job seeker. For instance, do you know the difference between imply and infer? Only a speaker can imply. Only a listener can infer. And when you say you'll be out of pocket, do you mean out of touch? Out of pocket means you're on your own dime, not yet reimbursed. And if anyone ever asks, why do you always answer a question with a question? You should reply, do I do that? Just kidding. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online over at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting on our site for you. If you like the show and you like what we're doing here at Free Talk Live, then go ahead and get your shopping done with us. Whether it's holiday shopping or just buying something for you, you can go to shop.freetalklive.com and link into Amazon from the links you'll find there. There's a few other companies you can link to as well. There's Amazon US, Amazon UK, and Amazon Canada. You click into the right Amazon for you. And get your shopping taken care of. You get the same great Amazon deals you're used to. The free Super Saver shipping, Amazon Prime, all of that. The reviews. It's your same Amazon experience. You're just entering through our affiliate link. So Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale. So go to shop.freetalklive.com. We're talking about the restrictions being loosened between the United States government and the Cuban government. There has been an exchange of prisoners. There has been a pledge of more. Uh, apparently Cuba... The government there has uh, pledged to release 53 prisoners in their own country. Now, these aren't people from the U.S. who are imprisoned in Cuba. These are Cubans imprisoned in Cuba uh, for political crimes. So they're saying they're going to release them. They're going to allow for more Internet access. And uh, and also the restrictions that are being lessened include remit you'll be able to, I guess, remittances. That's some sort of economic thing. Uh, travel and banking. So I don't know what that means exactly. You know, what So, for example... Uh People that have escaped Cuba mm -hmm. and come to the U.S., right now they're prohibited from sending money to their relatives ah, okay. in Cuba. So they will then be allowed to do that. So they can use things like Western Union or Bitcoin. Like wire transfer sort of things. Or Bitcoin. Yeah, it'd be cool to bring Bitcoin to Cuba, oh, that's absolutely. for sure. Now, how widespread internet Well, they need access internet access first. Yeah. Well, that's the question is, how widespread is it? I imagine it's more available than it is in North Korea uh, in Cuba, but you know, I don't know what the difference is as far as the degree. Uh, now, Obama had a few things to say about it. He said that, uh, let's see, story from the New York Times. We have been able to make, excuse me, actually, actually this is uh, Raul Castro. I apologize. Castro actually spoke on Cuban television announcing this, saying, we, we have been able to make headway in the solution of some topics of mutual interest for both nations. President Obama's decision deserves the respect and acknowledgement of our people. Only afterward did Mr. Castro mention the reopening of diplomatic relations. He said that this in no way means that the heart of the matter has been resolved. The economic, commercial, and financial blockade, which causes enormous human and economic damages to our country, must cease. The progress made in our exchanges proves that it is possible to find solutions to many problems. 
And I just think this is great news. I mean, the, the story goes on, gets a little bit more detailed about some of the back and forth between the, the politicians. And I'm not so concerned with what the politicians have to say. I'm more interested in what you think about this. And uh, you know, I had invited on our Facebook page for people to comment. I said Obama does something right and eases restrictions on Cuba. If you are for continuing the embargo, why? And... The only two comments made thus far don't really scream out intelligence. Duck Dammer says, F Cuba and all its inhabitants. As though everyone in Cuba is a bad person. I mean, people really think this way. Yeah, Duck, I would encourage you to call and and say why. You know, please, you know, tell us why. Yeah, I would love that too. However, unfortunately, Danica, I don't suspect most of the people on the Facebook page are actually live listeners to the show. Oh, well, you never know. Uh, well, you, it's true. You never know. But uh, a lot of the responses we get from people on Facebook usually indicate that they're not actually listening. Sometimes we'll, you know, we'll reference something that's happening on the show and people will type like, what? Huh? And you know, they, they'll be completely clueless because they're just sitting on Facebook and then they see this pop up on their feed. Another one from Carl Solman. He says, OK, let's treat North Korea the same way. Show me the difference. Oh, yeah. There's there's our, there's our North Korea reference. <laughs> OK, yeah. Let's you know, not be mean to the people in North Korea. Well, I've got no problem not being mean with people. This is just, it's its not just eth- ethnocentrism. I mean, this is straight up bigotry to say yes. that you, you Cubans, you're all scum. North Koreans are all bad because they tolerate, what, because they tolerate being ruled by people? Well, so do you. I mean, so do the American people. Yeah, Yeah. average Americans tolerate all kinds of crap from their governments, but yet they still pat themselves on the back for having the best government in the world. What was it, a year and a half ago when the uh, Boston Marathon bombing thing happened? Yeah, I would say that was a couple years ago. And there were, you know, the tanks that were rolling down the streets. And people were just, you know, walking out of their houses when they were told to walk out of their houses. And they were letting the cops rummage through everything in their house looking for this guy that wound up getting caught by someone who disobeyed the curfew to go outside and smoke a cigarette. Yeah, you weren't allowed outside of your house, right? Right. Unless, of course, you were kicked out of your house by men with guns. Right. And this guy decided he wanted to go have a cigarette. Went outside, smoked a cigarette. And that's when he noticed a blood stain on the boat, right? Noticed there was something weird with the boat cover and there was like a bloody footprint or something. There there was some kind of blood stain somewhere. Yeah. And the he was like, oh, into- something's not right here. The dude had crawled into the boat right. uh, and had, you know, sp- I guess, wiped a little blood on yeah. the way in. And so he called the cops and then the cops sent their little surveillance helicopter thing or a drone or something and then they discovered oh yeah there's a guy in the boat here's another uh, opinion from another talk show host rush limbaugh oh Ooh, let's see what uh el rushbo has wait to say to hear what he says <laughs> so uh now this kind of summarizes a couple other things that aren't related so let me jump through here after obama's surprising decision this is from wnd.com which is a righty website Surprising decision to normalize relations with Cuba, Limbaugh wondered what the president would do next. Limbaugh joked, we'll sell Iran a nuclear bomb. Wait till something like that happens. You ain't seen, you haven't seen anything yet. This Cuban thing, this is chump change. I have warned you, he continued. These last two years of the Obama administration are going to actually be what he would have done if he'd had total control and not have to worry about the Constitution the first two years. That doesn't even make sense. Right. As though Rush Limbaugh in the first two years of Obama's uh, administration would have ever commented, boy, you know, this uh, Barack Obama, he really seems to be respecting the Constitution. I'm really surprised. I'll tell you what. This isn't going to last. This whole respecting the Constitution thing, you, I... Heed my words. I've got one hand tied behind my back by God, and uh, or I am God, or whatever. Half it is that my he brain. Says. Uh, and you know, rat prattling on. Oh, I tell you, in four year, four six more years, at the end of his second term, he will go insane and forget all about the Constitution. 
When would uh, would Rush Limbaugh or any of these characters have claimed that Barack Obama was constitutional minded at any point? Well, he better be careful because Rand Paul does actually side with Obama on this decision. You mean Rush Limbaugh should be careful? Yeah, because that? another one, because another one of his you know Republican friends is standing with Obama. I don't know. I don't what think Rush that Limbaugh thinks Rush about is Rand necessarily Paul. a fan of Rand. Uh, that's what I would presume. I don't know what Rush Limbaugh's uh, position is on Rand Paul, but I think Rand Paul probably breaks from the norm too much. To oh, sure, yeah. have someone like Rush Limbaugh consider him a buddy. Oh, sure. You know, he's been confused with being considered a libertarian, and he has said that he does not consider himself a libertarian. He, he considers the word libertarian to be an albatross draped around his neck by the media. <laughs> Well, His word, not mine. To be clear, I'm not a fan of Rand Paul my, uh, either. I'm not going to get behind his campaign. Well, I'm not going to give I. him any money. But apparently he's on the right side on this one. You've got a news, news story about that, right? Oh, yeah. Time Magazine had reported that Rand actually stands with uh, the Obama administration about this. Uh, he said that he broke with the rest of the 2016 pact today when he said that Obama's uh, President Obama's decision was a good idea. Well, good on him. You know, I get, the guy deserves credit when he gets it right, but he yes. gets it wrong so, so often that the idea that anyone would consider him to actually be a libertarian is is pretty laughable. Oh, I, yeah, I wouldn't. You know, that would not make me throw in support for him. Absolutely not. There have been a couple of things that, you know, I did agree with him, but you know, this doesn't necessarily change my stance with him. It's great that he actually, um, he, the, the first that for the first time and maybe quite a while that some people at the both parties can agree on something well they can usually agree on a lot of things there's some things that are very bipartisan as as they're called sure. in washington dc uh, tax spend, spending yeah, borrow military. spend military yeah. uh keep taxes you know somewhat high ish but you know not too high we we right. can't go too high it's generally we can't go too low we we've got to keep it somewhere in between here so we'll bicker and argue about 35 or 39% right. There's no there's no real benefit to having the parties agreeing on anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people like to say things like that. Well, why can't they just agree on things so things can get done? Well, I don't want things to get done unless they're actually good things, which hardly ever happens. And in that Washington, would be DC. things being undone, like yeah, exactly. repealing large sections of law, like this Cuba thing. Please, All right, absolutely. So our toll free number tonight is eight fifty five four fifty free. Coming up, a Bitcoin entrepreneur is going to prison. We'll tell you about it on the way. It's free talk live. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's floor buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more floor buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. These deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, December 19th, 2014. Silver is trading at $15.92 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,198 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $313. Antiwar.com reports, congressional leaders continue to express outrage at President Obama's announced plan to normalize Cuba relations and are promising to block the effort. Can they? Not likely, according to experts who say the president has considerable leeway to curb the embargo against Cuba unilaterally, and Congress has limited options as far as stopping him. That's because even though a number of congressional leaders are lining up against the rapprochement, the polls show broad support among Americans, and they probably won't be able to muster a veto-proof resolution. Public animosity towards Cuba has faded over the last half century. Business interests are lining up to cash in as the U.S. normalizes its relations with Cuba and indeed brings its policy in line with the rest of the world. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Reuters reports a Washington-based journalist has sued St. Louis County and one of its police lieutenants, saying his rights were violated when he was arrested while covering protests over the killing of an unarmed teenager by a police officer in Ferguson, Missouri. Gerald Yinkst, a reporter and producer with News to Share, also accuses police of defaming him by announcing his arrest on Twitter and saying he had refused a commander's order to clear the street, damaging his professional reputation. He was one of two people detained on November 22nd during one of the nightly protests outside the Ferguson Police Department as a grand jury mulled whether to charge Darren Wilson with the shooting death in August of 18-year-old Michael Brown. The lawsuit by Yinkst, filed on Tuesday in U.S. District Court in Missouri, named St. Louis Police Lieutenant James Vollmer as a defendant and says he is being sued in his individual capacity. It also sues St. Louis County for allegedly failing to train and supervise Vollmer and for death. The lawsuit says Yinkst was standing on the sidewalk outside the police headquarters, recording attempts by police officers to clear protesters from the street, when Vollmer allegedly pointed at Yinkst and told a group of patrolmen to lock him up. Protesters and other reporters standing alongside Yinkst on the sidewalk were not arrested. The lawsuit added that no reasonable officer would have believed that defendant Vollmer had probable cause to arrest Yinkst. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently remove the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports in a lawsuit filed Thursday with the U.S. Supreme Court, Oklahoma and Nebraska argued that marijuana bought legally in Colorado is leaking across their borders. In their complaint, the two states argue that Colorado's legalization of recreational cannabis is unconstitutional. Voters in Colorado and Washington state voted in favor of legalization in 2012 referendums and have since been joined by Oregon, Alaska, and Washington, D.C. Legalization in some states has led to a dangerous gap in federal enforcement of drug laws, according to Oklahoma and Nebraska. Lawyers for the two states said, marijuana flows from this gap into neighboring states, undermining plaintiff states' own marijuana bans, draining their treasuries, and placing stress on their criminal justice systems. Attorney General John Suthers said the lawsuit has no merit. He suggested that Nebraska and Oklahoma are mainly concerned about the federal government's failure to enforce its own drug laws. The Obama administration has said that states that legalize cannabis must ban sales to minors and take steps to keep cannabis sold legally from getting across the border. Recently, the Justice Department said tribal organizations can also decide to legalize growing and selling of cannabis as long as they meet those standards, even if they are in states where cannabis is illegal. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
Jared Gilchrist was surfing when he was attacked by a shark that took his leg. Thanks for being with us, big guy. Thanks, this is tight. What was going through your mind when you first realized that you were there with a shark all alone in open water? It felt like a total badass. It bent to my leg and started shaking it back and forth, and at that point I just felt, yes, this is sweet. I can't imagine what it would have been like to see the teeth sinking into your leg like that. It was sick. At one point, I just saw my leg just floating there in the water. It was awesome. Okay, we're joined now via satellite by Dr. Brian Caddy. What condition was Jared's leg in when you first saw him? It was in pretty rough shape. Uh, the shark had scissored through the muscle and it was all just like hanging off the bone. It was, uh, it was nuts. Yeah, I kept touching it. It was slimy as hell. Yeah, totally. It was, uh, it was insane. Well, doctor, how do you deal with something like this? Well, you know, you're never fully prepared for an injury this freaking cool. Uh, you know, we just tried to stop the blood loss and we took a bunch of photos because it's hysterical to freak out the nurses with gnarly shit like this. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free here and bring up anything you'd like, 855-450-FREE. We do have other things to talk about tonight, including a Bitcoin entrepreneur who is going to prison. Uh, we will explain what's happening there. Also, Danica has a story about uh, a dad who has now been ruled against in a case against his own or brought, brought against him by his own daughter, who wants to go to college and wants daddy to pay for it. Well, uh, we'll get the details on that. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. And with you tonight, it's Ian. Danica. And Daryl. So we started, for those of you just tuning in, the show by talking about Obama gets something right. He's actually doing something right here. He's removing restrictions on uh, Cuba. Lessening them, not Yay. removing them, not removing them entirely. You still won't Ooh. be able. You will not be able to go to uh, Expedia and buy tickets to. Bit was, are they doing a Bitcoin with Expedia? Is that right? Yes. yes. Yeah. So you will not be able to buy uh, tickets with your Bitcoin or any kind of cash uh, to fly to Cuba. Not yet. Directly. Well, you you could always go to Canada. Yeah. And fly from Canada to Havana. If the U.S. finds out that you do that, do you get a stern talking to? Yes. Really? Yes, you do. A very stern talking to young oh, man. Oh, nasty grams. I love And now them. you go to your room and think about what you've done. And pay taxes while you're at it. So, uh, so I think that's good news. And, you know, I also thought that it was good news when the immigration reform came into play, even though I was mixed, more in mixed feelings about that, because I don't want to see more people being obedient to the state. Right. While at the same time, I also don't want to see people locked away in jail cells and uh, taken and away from the United Also, States. you don't want to see people risking their life in, you know, rafts that were, you know, yeah. like handmade to barely make a 90-mile journey. Oh, you're talking about Cuba now in this case. Yeah, absolutely. And so we want to lower, lessen some restrictions. Some of the travel restrictions are going to be uh, lessened. Not all travel restrictions. So the average person still will not be able to travel legally from the U.S. to Cuba. But uh, according to the story over at the New York Times, uh, some of the things that are going to change include the ability to, uh, I guess, some banking restrictions are going to be lifted. <laughs> Uh, there will be remittances, uh, which will be less restricted, and some travel restrictions as well. There also, Cuba has pledged, Cuban government has pledged to release prisoners, approximately 50 some political prisoners they've pledged to release, as well as expanding internet access to the Cuban people. So it's a step in the right direction, but some people are speaking out against it. And that's who I really wanted to talk to tonight. Uh, 855-450-FREE. Not a single person has bothered to call and take the position that keeping restrictions on Cuba is what should happen, that they should continue to be uh, restricted, that the embargo prohibiting trade, prohibiting business, prohibiting people from crossing the Cuban border from the United States should continue. There are a few people who've bothered to leave a comment on the Facebook page, but the problem with the Facebook comments is we can't ask you questions. We don't really know. You know, you can make your statement and we can share that, but we can't really have a conversation about it. Ian Ballard comments on Facebook saying, I oppose it on the grounds of wrecking their culture with Applebee's, McDonald's, Walmart, Monsanto, and tourists wrecking their beaches with condos and resorts. Isn't that... That would just be one way to stimulate their economy. I mean, 
provide more jobs. Uh, yeah. How, how would that be a bad thing? The Cuban people, a lot of them don't work and or they are not getting paid very, very well for anything that they do. It's a terrible place to live. It's very hard to find work in Cuba, at least the last I've heard. I don't know if any of the reforms from Raul Castro have made that any easier. If you have any personal experience, obviously we'd love to hear from you. Now, in the comment that you just shared is very similar to some of the comments that I have in this article about the people that are the biggest losers from the announcement that uh, some of the sanctions against Cuba are going to be lifted. I want to hear that story. Where is it from? <coughs> the story here is from freebeacon.com. Because I agree with Danica on this. I think that uh, it doesn't matter to me if it's Walmart or McDonald's. Obviously, to us, you know, us spoiled Americans, first world problems, oh, I wouldn't want to work at those places, you know, uh, because we have moved on in our skill levels in our life uh, to not have to work at a low-skill job like uh, like McDonald's. But the fact that those things exist is a good thing for uh, for some people who you know otherwise wouldn't have a job. If McDonald's opening up in Cuba, opening up some locations, uh, means that more people can go to work, then what's wrong with that? Yeah, I mean, take for example that there are WalMarts in Mexico that hasn't necessarily destroyed. You know, lots of people coming in and visiting, giving Mexico money. Uh, of course not. Some things in in the Walmart in, in Mexico you can't buy in the U.S. Like bongs, I was really excited. Yeah, to yeah, see that. like like that. Which is awesome. I would love to go and visit a Walmart in Mexico and see what it was like. Anyway, go ahead, Daryl, with this. Yeah. Story. So the article here, uh, the first sort of half of the first paragraph just talks about Obama made the announcement that he was going to be lifting some of the sanctions and resuming full diplomatic relations with Cuba. Many praised Obama's decision, but others, including Cuban-American Senators Marco Rubio and Robert Menendez, uh, Menendez being a Democrat from New Jersey, were outraged, as were many former prisoners of the Castro regime. They're not alone, however. A number of it's an outrage that Castro would release dozens of prisoners upon the request of the United States. How dare they have freedom? A number of self-important hipsters were dismayed that the Cuban embargo, which is often <laughs> described as economically crippling, might soon be lifted. The sudden infusion of capitalism they fretted may rob the authoritarian <laughs> nation of its rustic charm. And then they have some <laughs> tweets from people. So Sarah, this is not necessarily satire. This, this is, is not necessarily satire. <laughs> Sarah McLean says... I've got to get to Cuba quick before McDonald's and Starbucks ruin it. Tom, these are real. Are you are you are you telling me these are legitimate? This is a tweets? legitimate tweet. Uh, at Tom Matsey says I need to go to Cuba before Walmart and McDonald's ruin it. Oh, Fox News anchor, let that sink in for a second. Fox News anchor Shepard Smith expressed concern that economic mm. openness would ruin Cuba with Taco Bell and oh, Lowe's geez. Home Improvement Stores. Wow, what a, what a terrible idea to give the uh, Cuban people access to uh, home improvement supplies. We would not want that to be the case. Suppose the Cuban government were to suddenly release more of its political prisoners. Havana's Walmarts may suddenly become overcrowded. Que horrible! Wait, still, hold on, are we still on the Fox News guy? Uh, is that the Fox News no, th this is the Free Beacon. Uh, oh, okay, okay, that was their commentary. writing. Now, gotcha. uh, the announcement was of particular annoyance to those gritty gadabouts who have already visited Cuba before it was cool. Oh, uh, Jonathan Ellie says Cuba visit now before McDonald's, KFC, Starbucks, <laughs> and others move in. It's a very unique place. Now, see, I want to you know, pose a bit of a you know, better argument for allowing. McDonald places like McDonald's to come to Cuba because McDonald's has this really neat thing where it allows its franchises to use aspects of that uh, culture in, in yes. their foods. For example, you know, here in America we have, you know, burgers, fries, that kind of thing. But say McDonald's in Japan allows you to have like different kinds of burgers, like the black burger. I've seen the black burger. Yeah. It's crazy. And, and McDonald's in Mexico allows them to infuse part of their own culture, like, you know, chips and salsa, things like in, mm -hmm. into that restaurant. I, I forget so. uh, which country it is where the McDonald's serves spaghetti. Wow. Probably, probably Italy, I would assume. <laughs> Maybe. Well, spaghetti's not actually Italian. I realize that. I'm just saying there is a lot of spaghetti. In, 
the, right. that I wouldn't, I'm not saying <laughs> that's a, where it's, a it's fair at. Guess. It's a it's a pretty good guess, but I mean, I you know there have been um, like pizzas. You're that, just a, pizza a corporate hut. apologist, though, Danica. I mean, you're just yeah. making excuses for corporate America, aren't you? You're on their payroll. <laughs> Hail corporatism. <laughs> are you ca- are you cashing a check from Ray Kroc? No. Okay. <laughs> Jeremy Scahill says, I'm very glad I was able to visit Cuba several times before U.S. tourists try to turn it into Cancun. <laughs> and the article from Free Beacon concludes, it says, years from now. Don't worry. Hold on. Even if Cuba is turned, even if there's some port area of Cuba where beautiful tourist kind of trap hotels spring up and all kinds of commerce starts happening and people start getting paychecks. Uh, don't worry. There will still be a poor part of Cuba that will be just outside of it, like in, you know, Mexico, where you, if you really want to get a taste of real Cuba, you'll still be able to go. Yep. Uh, there's more to the story. There's though. a little bit more. Right, hang on. We'll bring uh, bring that up here in moments. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number here. You can take control of Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800 691 6129. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book. And it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Free Talk Live. And I still swore to the commander-in-chief. The commander so what's, what's, what, what oath is higher to you? I'm not going to stand up and, and go AWOL because... No, I don't believe Well, wait, nobody said you had to go AWOL. Did you swear two O's, one to the commander-in-chief and then one to the Constitution? You swear one to the Constitution as your commander-in-chief as your executive order. Which part of the oath is the priority? Is it upholding the Constitution? Well, so whatever the commander in chief says is what goes. It that doesn't sounds like matter. A cult of personality. It to doesn't me. matter if it's unconstitutional. This what is the a nation of laws, says. supposedly. I was told, and since the Constitution's the highest law in the land, if the, if the commander in chief apparently violates chief that uh, that piece of paper, then you should, as you know, you should, as a person who swore an oath to that Constitution, <laughs> go in there and arrest him. Okay, well, I mean, I, 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 you know, you're making sense. Yeah, I'm trying. Uh, Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? 
Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited here to take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Daryl will be sharing with us more from people who oppose the loosening of restrictions on Cuba. We'd still love to hear from you by the phone if you would like at 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number, and you can join us via Skype. Our Skype username is LRN.FM. If you are online, you should care about your privacy there. And if you do care about online privacy, go and get ProXPN. It's free to download their software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices. Linux users set up is also, uh, it's a little different, but it's also easy to get rolling with Linux. You go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. That's where you grab the software to get started for free. When you're ready to upgrade to their premium account which gives you unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, and you can privately torrent as well as get past regionally blocked websites, you'll want to use our discount code, which is FTL50. ProXPN encrypts your internet connection, meaning that your internet service provider won't be able to snoop on you anymore. They're not going to be able to log the websites you visit or the search terms that you enter, which they're probably logging right now and maybe keeping those logs for up to five years. ProXPN puts a stop to that. You go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go grab the software when you're ready to upgrade to premium. Use code FTL50. That saves you 50% on the price of their annual account, which breaks your price down to just about $5 per month. It's an amazing deal, and there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose but your privacy. ProXPN, by the way, does not keep records of your online habits, so go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. The code you need is FTL50 as we go to Zoe Saturn calling from Mars. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian Danica and Daryl. Do we have Zoe Saturn? Hello. So I was calling about this Cuban embargo thing. Yes, sir. So I think if they do this, that it will eventually lead to uh, the taking of our jobs. (laughs) How's that? Uh. Because then they can just come here and and take our jobs, you know, because we're Americans. Well, just to be clear, the uh, travel restrictions have not actually been lifted. But uh, you're suggesting that if travel restrictions are lifted, then and then that they would be lift, lifted both ways. By yeah, the and then they want to try to take the border and. You know, and then they can just come in and take our jobs, and and then they'll drive because on it's my so road. easy to walk across that ninety miles of ocean. <laughs> So, well, I mean, yeah, but then it could hurt my roads. <laughs> it could hurt your roads if they take your jobs. Uh, and so why are you so afraid? I mean, why are you so afraid? What about like, you know, other people who could take your job? What about like teenagers? They could take your job. Well, right? just basically, you know, because they're not in the competition, I think, because, you know, they come here, they can take our jobs and tear up my road. <laughs> Thanks because for the call, man. I appreciate it. Are. Toll free number tonight. I, I think he was trolling by could Oh, be absolutely. Wrong. Yes. <laughs> he just he ran out of material. So it was good. It was a good call. Uh, the toll free number is 855 450 free. He was joking, but what he was saying could have been said in all seriousness by someone coming oh, from yeah, the far right. Oh, yeah, I could just hear someone yeah. just calling with that argument and not really having I- any sort of logical explanation why. It's just like, okay, yeah, they could take your jobs. Well, so could someone that has a higher education. So, so could someone who is more youthful than you are. Someone, right. Usually younger people are willing to work for less. So that's why I asked him, well, what about teenagers? I I, I thought he was serious until he mentioned the roads. Yeah. (laughs) That's what gave it away. So we're uh, sharing, or Daryl, you're sharing from freebeacon.com. It's actually, uh, it sounded like satire. Uh, Self-important hipsters are the biggest losers of the Cuba deal. But it's actual tweets from real live people. Yes. 
and I, I think that, you know, hipsters are this sort of subset of the culture that they're a parody of themselves. So it kind of, in a way, is satire, but it's also very, very real. The article <coughs> continues. It says, years from now, when they, being the self-important hipsters, casually mention their youthful visits to Cuba to a new acquaintance or love interest, the edginess will have worn off. Oh, that's kind <laughs> of cool, the acquaintance might respond. But have you been to Rika or Pyongyang? The decline in social status will be devastating for those discerning hipsters. Perhaps they can find a small comfort in whatever artsy commune, Nuevo Brooklyn perhaps, that hosts the first wave of expat gentrification in Havana. Meanwhile, the rest of us will be kicking it at Sandals Guantanamo Bay. You can share your thoughts with us here. Toll free number is 855-450-FREE. The general sort of overall theme of those comments was that the corporations are going to ruin Cuba. Yes. And I guess those very same people would like to get rid of the corporation. Oh, wait, how many of those people were typing that from a Starbucks? I just wonder, you know. Probably a good many. I, yeah. Or I, a McDonald's. Well, McDonald's has free Wi-Fi. Yeah, so does Starbucks. Starbucks is trendier, right? Like his, uh, Starbucks is more likely Starbucks to have. But, but is McDonald's is not, it, well, it may be trendier, but now McDonald's is in competition because they are selling gourmet coffees and such. So. Well, that's true. But uh, do you think they're really competing with the core Starbucks uh, audience? No. Probably they're che- they have cheaper food. <laughs> okay, so what you're what it sounds to me like, uh, Danica, is that you uh, value afford- affordable coffee, right? But I don't know if the people who are spending money at Starbucks are so concerned about that, right? Like they're not going after the Dunkin' Donuts coffee because they've got good coffee, I guess, right? Well, I've heard that. De- it's it's depends, you know, whether a Dunkin' Donuts is closer to you or a Starbucks is closer to you, and which you would rather spend your money on well again someone who thinks like you would likely factor in distance as far as you know which place uh, fact you're factoring in important things to people who are you know concerned with how they spend their money like i'm just saying distance and price all i'm really saying is that they could be easily from mcdonald's too because mcdonald's has wi-fi could be um, they could also be at a panera bread a target all those you know, other like most, big corporations. Most that they're businesses from. now that have any sort of sitting area for customers have Wi-Fi. Right, they offer some sort of Wi-Fi. Would a hipster even go to Starbucks though, or is that too uncool now? I don't, I don't know. know. Depends on the hipster, I think, if you ask. Yeah. So I'm not too worried about uh, the idea that corporations are going to ruin Cuba. I side with Danica on this. I think that if these companies do go to Cuba eventually, that'll just mean good things for the Cuban people, including jobs, the aff- affordable products that uh, that they can buy, and you know, good on those those companies if they're willing to take that risk of and the hassle of having to deal with the Cuban government. Because I, I don't imagine it'll be easy. Uh, of all of the businesses mentioned here, I do have to wonder if Walmart would ever actually go to Cuba. Why wouldn't they? Because Walmart generally tends to only open new businesses in areas where they get free land and tax breaks. Okay. And I don't know if the Cuban government would offer them free land and tax breaks. That tends to be true in the United States, but who knows if they play that same way in other countries. I don't know. They could just go to places where they think they'll make money. I'd be very curious to see what countries they're in, which ones they're not. If Walmart is looking to open a store and there's a you know an area where there's not already a Walmart, then they're going to shop themselves around and try to get the best property tax deal out of the various different municipalities. Whether they'll be able to do something like that in Cuba or 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 even if they'll bother trying. I mean, it's always about money, right? Like that's just another factor they're factoring into. Well, you know, will it be more profitable to locate in County X or in County Y? And in this case, their question will be, well, will it be profitable to locate in Cuba at all? Uh, 855-450 free. And maybe the answer will be no, at least immediately. 855-450 free. Share your thoughts on Cuba or whatever's on your mind here on Free Talk Live. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. 
we have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can't do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This no, is you ain't going to make it. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? Take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. Call right now. 800-208-5187. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's uh, toll-free number 855-450-3733. We have Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. There's a Facebook meme right now that is claiming that there's a pro-cop rally going on in New York City tonight that no one is attending. Now, I'm trying to verify whether <laughs> I'm trying to verify whether that's true and cuz you know, it's just a picture on Facebook. And so far, I haven't found a whole lot of evidence that there's much going on. PIX11, which is a New York TV station, is reporting that the protest supposedly started around 5 o'clock. But the only picture they have is of three people 
uh, standing holding signs. There's not any kind of wide shot to show the, you know, the depth and the scope of a large rally. As you may recall, it was about a week ago that there were huge rallies in cities all around the country, including New York City, where at least 50,000 people were in attendance to protest uh, police abuse and the lack of accountability. And tonight it looks like the police supporters are staying home. Uh, but if if you've got more on that, please let us know. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Now, it's cold already up here in New Hampshire, and it's not even officially winter. A little winter chilly. Time. Yeah, not even officially winter time yet. Um, but, uh, you know, winter's coming. It's going to get colder. And you might be considering, whether you're in New Hampshire or anywhere in the cold states, you might be considering a little bit of a vacation come the end of February. Well, you've got your opportunity, thanks to Jeff Berwick of the Dollar Vigilante. He is billing Acapulco in Mexico as the new Liberty destination. And Mark's going to find out whether that's true or not. And you can go as well. And Acapulco is what it's being called. Uh, Jeff Berwick and Angel Clark will be speaking there. Roger Veer, a.k.a. Bitcoin Jesus. Cody Wilson, you know him from the Defense Distributed Company. Nima Vidati, Objectivist Girl, Luke Rudkowski, and Dana Martin, as well as Ernie Hancock and more. What more of a reason do you need to go to Acapulco in February? The tickets, they're pretty reasonable. Less than $100 if you register by Christmas at anarchapulco.com. Workshops will be held all week. The action really heats up on the weekend of February 27th through March 1st. So at the very end of February uh, through March 1st, you're going to want to be down in Mexico, in Acapulco, for Anarchapulco. Go check out their schedule. It's uh, anarchapulco.com, the new Liberty destination, anarchapulco.com. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. We've been talking quite a bit about the Cuba pullback, and I'm excited about it. I think that hopefully it'll lead to more of a, uh, or I guess fewer restrictions being more restrictions being removed, I guess. I'd like to see that happen because at this point, they're still not talking about true freedom to travel, uh, but maybe that'll be at some point in our future. Let's go to Livewire. He's in New Orleans. You're on Free Talk Live, Livewire. Hey, I wanted to comment on cyber uh, attacks via various governments, specifically uh, uh, Korea and apparently China on the movie industry. Uh, first, I would make the prediction that I wouldn't be surprised that eventually now this movie will be released, particularly after comments today that were made by number 44. Um, uh, I certainly don't number agree 44? with censorship. Yeah, Obama. The, uh, the, the, yes, correct. Oh, the, 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 okay. The He's the 44th yeah. president. Okay. Yeah, so uh, earlier today he was saying something to the fact that he didn't think that our society society should be based upon uh, censorship, oddly, uh, that's contradictory to statements that he had made about uh, Benghazi a couple of years back when supposedly a cartoon figure with the name Mohammed on a piece of paper started a whole uh, scenario of having our uh, em embassy in, uh, over there in the Middle East to be destroyed and have several Americans uh, killed over it. Uh, now we have, again, this situation and a major, uh, you know, marketing uh, movie organization pulling, at least for the time being. Again, I'm expecting that they'll eventually release it because the there's a headline on together. the Drudge Report where the Sony boss man says they do intend to release the movie. Uh, the reason it was pulled was because major theater chains were pulling their willingness to play the film. So, you know, they just decided to not play this movie because the hack group had delivered a message uh, to Sony that essentially threatened movie theaters who were showing the film. They made it sound like some sort of actual real-world attack could be brought against a movie theater that was showing Right, the and movie. the film was supposed to have come out on Christmas Day, so they're Correct. probably just going to, okay. you know, Push it back, put it out sometime, you know, January, February. The, what I read t yeah. today, Daryl, suggested that they're looking for an alternative delivery method, that at this point they don't feel like the movie theaters are going to sign on. Like, there's no point in – they're not going to release this to theaters that aren't willing to take the movie. And I don't think those theaters uh, well, are going to be willing to take the movie in three months. Well, there, there was a movie theater chain down in Texas – that said that they wanted to, since Sony wasn't going to allow them to show the interview, they wanted to show the Team America movie that's been out for a decade. That also 
Kill and the Kim movie uh, company that had put that DVD out 10 years ago said, yeah, we're not going to give you the license to really? show it in your movie wow, theater. Wow, I didn't oh, know I that. Didn't about that. I thought well, they went ahead and started showing it. That wasn't a chain, by the way. I think that was the Alamo Draft House, which I believe is one theater in Austin, but I could be wrong uh, about that. No, there, there's a few throughout Texas. Oh, interesting. Okay, so Livewire, yeah, any so, other comments? Uh, yeah, well, just to finish up that, ultimately, the, uh, thank you for the correction, first of all. I didn't see the Drudge Report uh, story. But anyway, uh, I do expect, again, uh, the movie theaters will eventually cave, too, because Hollywood, the greed of Hollywood big shots will change. And in fact, They'll cave in what way? Today was, How will the movie theaters uh, cave? Well, uh, well uh, again, they'll, they'll finally realize, and now after the president's statements today, they'll be like, okay, well, we all need to make our money. Uh, personally, I won't go see the movie because I'm not going to be a part of the, the that scenario to give – them money i won't go uh, see the movie because it just free. didn't look funny i mean i watched the previews and i can't say i really thought it was yeah that it funny didn't seem looking. like something that i would pay ten dollars to looked go see lame i so, won't go because i don't really go to the movie theater i think i've been twice in the last two years yeah i go very seldom as well it's have to be a real exciting kind of a movie and if, uh, if it's free i'll go Livewire, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, he's listening, by the way, in New Orleans to WGSO. Our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. I, I don't think the theaters are going to sign on for this. I mean, look, I get where he's coming from, saying that he thinks they're going to do it to make money. But um, while it's certainly true that there's a high demand for this movie now as a result of this, and that's kind of leading to some conspiracy theory that maybe the movie theater, or not the theater, the movie chain... Uh, Sony hacked Sony. itself hacked itself and <laughs> that this was all just a, a big publicity stunt. Maybe Alex Jones hacked it uh to you know like create some of his own weird conspiracies because he you know has some really weird conspiracies. But I don't think that the theaters if they're pulling the movie now are going to reconsider in a in a few months and say all right well we'll go ahead and risk our a theaters being shot up by some crazed group of maniacs or bombed or whatever it is that you know may occur to a company that is showing this uh if sony even allows it to be shown in theaters it sounds to me like they're looking for an alternative options so maybe we'll see netflix or some other company like that get some sort of an exclusive deal who knows where it's going to end up and how it's going to end up being shown but they Straight have pledged, to torrent i doubt it but uh, they have pledged to release this movie so, for what it's worth. Uh, let's go to Adam. He's in Massachusetts. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Adam. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, uh, go ahead with your thoughts. Uh, I was thinking about the whole Cuba thing, and uh, it kind of just seems out of the blue with this whole change in policy. And uh, there were some people commenting on the Internet and on Reddit um, and some, I guess, conspiracy theories that uh, the more likely reason that precipitated this whole change is that they finally uh, – decided to accept a private central bank down in Cuba. Is that true? I don't know if it's true, but it seems to make the most sense. It seems like all the bad guy countries that the U.S. don't like are all the ones that lack private central banks. Well, the you know the Cuban government currently prints its own money, so they have a central bank. What yes, is... I know. It's a it's a state-run central bank, but it, it it's it's lacking a private central bank. What's the like function? There's no one, functional like... difference between the two, right? Like why would that matter? Well, why I mean, would why would it be States... so such a big deal for Cuba to change from a state-run central bank to a private-run central bank that's ultimately controlled by the state? Why would that one change be enough for them to lessen restrictions against Cuba? Well, it, it's it... I mean, the United States Lee doesn't lives in oh, Gaza. Stand by. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Yeah. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time coffee.freetalklive.com.
For all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. And there's 60% off. Plus, personalized one-of-a-kind gifts are also to 60% off. It's our best deal of the season. But hurry, offer ends December 7th. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to Vistaprint.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code RADIO60. Vistaprint.com, code RADIO, the word 60. It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. (coughs) But don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA four-herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain. Normally $26.95, now just $20. Herbalhealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Yes. I'm certain they still have it. It's that sign zone. Hey, Free Talk Live. Toll free number 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are waiting there if you like the show and you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live. Then please become a Free Talk Live amplifier. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. And the idea is you send 5 bucks a month to Free Talk Live, and we take that 5 bucks and we invest it into Free Talk Live to get on more radio stations around the country, to bring more Internet listeners on board, and to expose new people to the ideas of freedom. So that's a good idea. And if you like what we're doing here, then please help us out at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can use any major credit card. You get access to perks. 
Uh, you can use credit cards through PayPal. You can also use Visa and MasterCard right on our website. But the perks include things like access to the Amp Only call-in lines, the Amp Only Facebook group, the Amp Only podcast, and more. Please go to amp.freetalklive.com. As we go back to Adam, he's in Massachusetts. Adam, I apologize. We had some technical difficulties there that meant that we rudely had to cut you off. Uh, so go ahead with, uh, with can you recap basically what you were saying there? Yeah, I was just saying the... I feel like the most likely scenario of this sudden change in policy towards Cuba is that they've come to some sort of agreement to establish a private central bank to issue the currency versus the state issuing the currency. Now, you don't know if that's actually that, true. You've just heard that that's the case. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know either. That seems like it would not be the only factor as to whether or not that's why the United States decided to lessen the restrictions, but it's an interesting theory. Was there anything else you wanted to throw out there tonight? Um, besides that, I've heard that there's a lot of uh, oil resources down there as well, but as far as the oil market's going right now, I don't know if that would be one of the main major factors. Th there's definitely oil in Cuba and... That's one of the things that led to the deep uh, the the deep horizon uh, BP disaster mm. was where they were taking the drill thing and going kind of at an angle from the middle of the Gulf of Mexico to up under the island of Cuba or up under what would have been uh, the territorial waters of Cuba and then something wasn't sealed off properly and caused the whole thing to blow up. But oil companies have definitely tried, you know, getting to that oil without going into Cuban waters. Adam, thanks for your call tonight. Do appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, quick Google search. I couldn't find anything necessarily about the Cuban bank going private. That doesn't mean it's not happening, but it seems seems unlikely. Why would a government bank... Why would a government want to privatize its own bank? What would the, the benefit to them be? I don't know. Uh, I found a list on Wikipedia of all of the central banks across the globe, mm -hmm. and it doesn't specify which ones are privately owned and which ones aren't. Uh, if you do a Google search for uh, central countries with government-controlled central bank, You'll see links to some conspiracy theory websites that say there's only three countries left without a Rothschild-controlled central bank. <laughs> and, of course, those are the ones that, you know, the uh, warmongers want to go blow up. Mm. But I, I highly doubt that the central bank of China is run by some a private, private company. company. Yeah, look, so that's the way it is in the United States. In case people aren't aware of this, uh, the Federal Reserve is a private institution. But I, I'm putting air quotes around the private because in the U.S., the I believe it is the president who appoints – was it the tre treasurer? Some, somebody in the Treasury Department sits on the board or something of uh, the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve is appointed by the president – Okay. The other members of the board are somehow selected by the 12 regional Federal Reserve the branches, banks. and all government-licensed banks are members of the Federal Reserve system. So it's one of these quasi-governmental, quasi-private institutions. Sort of like the Postal Service. Uh, not quite. Not, not quite. quite. The Postal Service is more government, probably, than the, the Federal Reserve is. Right. And, you know, the Postal Service doesn't have 12 regional branches. They don't, you know, each put out their special little yeah. stamps. If you look at a dollar bill, you can see which uh, Federal Reserve bank it came from. So uh, you're welcome to share your thoughts here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I can't find anything about this. I'm looking on Google, yeah. Cuban Bank, private, Cuba Bank of Cuba to go private. Uh, there's no there, there's no claim even from the conspiracy sites that I, I can see about that one. So that's news to me uh, if that's the case. And in the United States, the Federal Reserve, not only is it mixed in directly with the state in that, you know, the president appro appoints the chairman, among other things, 
but also the existence of the Federal Reserve is it's there because of the state. It's its right. job is to serve the state. It's not like right. you know, it's not like the average private institution. It's not like it can just decide, well, see you later. We're uh, we're out of this deal. We're not gonna give you know, we're not gonna be printing up your money anymore. It's it's part and parcel to the Federal Reserve's existence. Right. And unlike the uh, first and second Bank of the United States, which were the original uh, central banks in the U.S. under the current Constitution, the Federal Reserve Charter does not have an expiration date. Whereas the oh, wow. uh, first and second national banks, they had in the charters that the charter had to be renewed after a term of years. That doesn't exist anywhere in the legislation that created the Federal Reserve or in the charter of the Federal Reserve System. So you can dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. Apparently the Cuban Central Bank even has its own website. Uh, so, yeah, there's there appears to be more Internet access in Cuba than there is in North Korea, where the sole website out of North Korea is the state's news website. That is, as I understand it, the only website that exists in North Korea. I wonder if the internet access in Cuba is only um, selected for those that are, you know, like the, you know, the upper class or those that are favored I or suspect, government officials, which yeah. is probably why they would only be able case. to use the internet there. But in this case, the uh, central Cuban bank actually has a page about it in English, so you can actually read. Does it have things like bill pay or like access your account? Or oh is it just no, like, I don't know about that. Yeah, it's, it's just like a, <laughs> you know, here's you know our information about our bank, but it doesn't offer any of the modern banking uh tools that we use here i suspect you're right about that but i'm not you know obviously i'm not a customer well, central not banks in. also aren't commercial banks right like you can't go create an account at the federal reserve bank in atlanta <laughs> yeah. those are banks for banks essentially the federal reserve bank essentially is a lender to other banks who then lender lend, of last resort right who right, then yeah. lend to you ronald is in florida you're on free talk live with the Danica and daryl Hey, how you guys doing? Good, yeah, I Ronald. just wanted to chime in, chime in real quick about the uh, North Korea Sony hack, or you know, they claim it's North Korea anyway. Yeah, there, apparently, uh, there's an article uh, at Wired that says that the evidence that it was North Korea is flimsy. So who knows who's actually yeah. behind it? Well, anyway, uh, I was reading the I was mainstream or uh, listening to the radio last night, and the uh, I believe the United States is considering some form of retaliation. Uh, but they haven't made up their mind. But I have a suggestion. Uh, they could uh, keep uh, Dennis Rodman from going over there. That would be a good way to retaliate, wouldn't why, it? Why? Because they like Dennis Rodman? Would that be yeah, why it would be yeah. retaliation? No, no more Dennis Rodman for them. You know, Dennis Rodman actually credits himself with uh, the North Korea's release of Kenneth Bay, who was a prisoner being held over there. I think he was like a Christian missionary or something like yeah, that. Yeah, there, there have been three uh, prisoners released from North Korea That's this correct. year that were Americans. Yeah, and uh, there's actually an article where Dennis Rodman takes credit for, for that because he actually talked to Kim Jong-un and apparently encouraged him to do the right thing on some of these issues. So, you know, maybe Dennis Rodman actually did help facilitate that. Yeah, maybe so, maybe so. Good call, though, Ronald. Yeah, thanks. Thanks Bye. for making it tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. For those who don't know, Dennis Rodman has actually gone over to North Korea a couple of times, uh, in one case to, I guess, sort of head up uh, this basketball game, sort of an exhibition game with these... Uh, it was the Globetrotters, I think, that they actually brought over. They, they had some of the Globetrotters yeah. Yeah. and a film crew from, I think Vice. it was Vice... Right. And they actually had a couple of the guys from that film crew play basketball with a couple of the Globetrotters and some of the people from like the Korean national That's team. True. And they split it up to where each team had a couple of Americans, a couple of Koreans, yep. and the game ended in a tie. It was amazing. And the Vice documentaries that have come out of North Korea are fascinating. I highly recommend any of them. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450. Free still to come. We got the latest on ter the terrible news in the Bitcoin universe where one Bitcoin entrepreneur is going to be checking himself into federal prison in a few months. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's Floor Buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top-quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more Floor Buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. These deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, December 19th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,199, silver around $15.97, and Bitcoin is trading around $310.73. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat to receive a 10% off listener discount on your next purchase. In the news, in his final speech on the floor of the Senate, Senator Mark Udall discussed an additional secret CIA report on torture, which he called a smoking gun. The report is known as the Panetta Review, named for former CIA Director Leon Panetta. Following the initiation of the Senate Intelligence Committee's report on CIA torture, the CIA themselves began an internal report to anticipate arguments made by the committee. Now, this report was mistakenly included in some 6 million pages of classified records that were given to the committee for their investigation. Vice News filed a FOIA request to obtain the report, but a lawyer with the CIA claimed the documents were intended for CIA eyes only and are exempt from FOIA disclosure. President Obama officially signed an executive order Thursday that will establish a task force for reviewing law enforcement practices. Obama first announced the panel last month and will give them until March 2nd to present a list of recommendations. The president had previously announced the co-chair of the panel would be Philadelphia Police Chief Charles Ramsey. In addition to the panel, there's also a White House review on police militarization expected to be released soon. On Thursday, the attorney generals of Oklahoma and Nebraska filed a lawsuit in the U.S. Supreme Court, arguing that Colorado's legal cannabis industry violates the Constitution. Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt said the states surrounding Colorado are unable to enforce their state's policy against cannabis because of Colorado's recently passed Amendment 64. The suit says the new law violates the Supremacy Clause of the Constitution, which gives federal law precedence over state law. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Bean is brought to you by Marjorie Wildcrafts Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, visit TheLibertyBeat.com advertise. 
This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, December 19th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Austin, Texas Liberty activist and conscious hip-hop artist Mark Jenkins is producing an online program about police brutality and police accountability activism. The show, titled Watching You, Watching Me, will be in a format similar to TV's Tosh.0, where the host gives commentary and shows highlights of online videos. Know Your Rights Trainings, Corrupt Cop of the Month, and Prison Watch are just a few of the segments that will be featured on the program. Mark Jenkins says the goal of the project is to educate people on their constitutional rights and to show them how to fight back against the oppressors. Jenkins has launched a GoFundMe campaign to help raise funds for the project. He's also selling Watching You, Watching Me swag, such as shirts and hoodies, a promo CD, and other apparel. An international architecture studio has unveiled a concept for a retirement community in Singapore, which would promote an active lifestyle and on-site farming. Spark has said the home farm is designed to generate discussion about the many potentials of combining urban farming with senior living. 20% of Singapore's population is expected to be 65 and older by 2030. With a reported 90% of Singapore's food imported, the nation is struggling to find ways to sustainably feed an aging population. The community would offer opportunity for growing vegetables in a variety of designs. Residents would not be forced to work to live in the community, but could offset costs by contributing work. The Liberty Bean is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern. Join Corey Moore and his co-hosts as they tackle the topics of the day. The Corey Moore Show, Friday nights at 10 at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, December 19, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. It's the Onion Radio News. A man on TV urges the mass purchase of Listerine. This is Doyle Redland reporting. In what is believed to be the widest reaching appeal ever made by an individual on behalf of an oral hygiene aid, an unidentified man urged millions of people across the U.S. to purchase Listerine brand antiseptic mouthwash today. Experts are baffled as to why a person with the power to reach millions would choose to present an oral hygiene-related message. FCC spokesperson Grant Yarborough. Well, this individual should be so obsessed with oral hygiene as to demand that several million bottles of Listerine be simultaneously purchased as baffling. The man, described as a handsome, trustworthy-looking individual in his early 30s, emphatically stressed that Listerine should be purchased over other inferior mouthwash brands. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free and bring up anything that you'd like. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number, and you can join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to reach out to us there. Now, in order to get on via Skype, you do have to send a contact request first. It will be approved, and once it is approved, you'll be all set to call on Skype from that point forward. So do that. Our, again, username at Skype is lrn.fm, and the toll-free number is 855 855- 450 free. Charlie Shrem, longtime listeners of Free Talk Live, will remember the name. Uh, in fact, long longtime listeners and Bitcoin fans will remember his company, Bit Instant. Uh, they were an advertiser of ours for a period of time, and for a while, they were the only option to turn cash into Bitcoins. Uh, and unfortunately, they ended up going out of business, uh, par- probably due in large part to the fact that Charlie Shrem ended up being attacked by the federal government for performing a service for people. people How dare you perform right. services for people, Ian? A, a voluntary service for human beings who are consensually interacting with Charlie Shrem uh, to you know, change money into another form of money, to change U.S. dollars, for instance, into Bitcoin. And he is now going to prison for his efforts. With you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. The story from InsideBitcoins.com. Bitcoin advocate, early adopter, and founding board member of the Bitcoin Foundation, Charlie Shrem, was sentenced today as a result of a plea deal struck in September 
The former Bitcoin entrepreneur was sentenced to two years in prison, plus three years of what's called supervised release. I guess that's their version of probation. Sounds like it. Uh, Shrem, who's 25 and is from Manhattan, was arrested in January along with associate Robert Faella, accused of selling over $1 million in bitcoins in a money laundering scheme involving users of the Silk Road, the dark web black market that was ultimately shut down. That's the first iteration of Silk Road. There's been a second and now third iterations of the Silk Road. The third one is, from what I understand, still, uh, still open. Shrem pleaded, uh, pleaded guilty to charges of aiding and abetting the operation of an unlicensed money transmitting business, while Faella pleaded guilty to operating an unlicensed money transfer business. So uh, I don't think they go into detail here on what actually occurred in the case. They do not. But I have read the indictment uh, in this case and or look, looked it over enough to really understand to some extent what was happening. Faella was a... Uh, person on the Silk Road who was offering to exchange uh, Bitcoins for cash, if I'm recalling correctly. Okay. And so, uh, of course, Bit, uh, Bit Instant, Charlie Shrem's company, would exchange cash for Bitcoins. And so this Faella guy was getting Bitcoins from uh, Charlie Shrem and was uh, wait was he doing it that way yeah he was getting bitcoins from Charlie Shrem I believe and then was essentially selling those no I've got it wrong I've got something wrong here Char Faella was doing he was the guy on Silk Road who was offering a service to the customers there some kind of a cash exchange and I forget which direction it went I apologize about that but uh, Shrem was facilitating this to some extent because Faella was using BitInstant in order to do this. And what was happening was they were exchanging emails with one another without encryption. So when the feds went into Shrem's email account, which was like a Gmail account or whatever, so they easily got access to his emails. When they went into his email account, they saw countless emails between him and this other guy where Shrem is essentially admitting that... Yeah, BitInstant has to abide by these know your customer rules because blah, 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 regulations, etc. And essentially, he was sort of going, helping this guy, Faella, pass under the radar. He was not subjecting Faella to the requirements that he was supposed to legally subject all of his customers to. Okay. And that information was right there in his email account. So, so Faella was his customer. That's and correct. Faella was doing transactions with other people, facilitating. Yeah. So basically, I, he was the middleman between Charlie Shrim and some endpoint person. I think what was going on was that, well, because when, when you go on the Silk Road, you have to pay with Bitcoin. Right. Things. You, can't, you can't pay with cash to buy Bitcoin on uh, Silk Road. So I'm pretty sure he was selling people cash for their Bitcoin on Silk Road. Yes. Which would mean that he would be taking in Bitcoin and then he would need to cash that out. Right. Um, so I think he was using BitInstant in reverse. BitInstant's usual way of doing business was to turn right. people's cash into Bitcoins. I think he was using them to cash out the Bitcoins he was getting from Silk Road. And so it was all there in a series of emails. I don't I guess it you know it makes sense that Shrem went ahead and took a plea on this one because they had him dead to rights. Right. Um now the the laws suck. I don't agree with what this guy's facing. I don't think that he's committed a crime. I don't care that he was dealing with somebody who was on the Silk Road knowing that ultimately, you know, those customers may have gone on to purchase drugs or something like that. That's certainly what the feds were alleging to me. None of that matters. It was all voluntary transactions between two human beings. And, of course, the, the big question remains as to whether or not they would have been able to make a case against Charlie Shrem had he actually encrypted his email communications with this guy. Because it was due to the emails that were available in the open, in the clear, that the feds were able to make the necessary connections to link Faella to the account on the Silk Road and, you know, link everybody together as, as necessary. Well, my question now is, will the prosecution in the Ross Ulbricht case, be able to cite this as evidence against Ross. What would the evidence be against Ross? 
well, we've already got people that have pled guilty to using your website to do illegal things. Oh, I see. So, therefore, we know that you were doing illegal things on your website. That's may just do that. They, they Even may. though they can't, you know, they still have to prove that Ross Ulbricht was the one that was running the website. They do. And that he knew that illegal things were happening. You know, they, they definitely have, you know, a couple of victories under their belt to show the judge illegal things happened, so therefore guilty. So I have a question. They uh, sure. so they said that the emails were um, not encrypted. That's so correct. Just we, regular old Google. Just regular old Google. Yeah. So did they have two-factor like verification or just kind of automatically two signed factor in? Two-factor wouldn't do anything at all. I mean, are you suggesting that it wasn't Charlie Shrem who wrote the emails? No, no, no. What I'm saying is that if they... Let's supposedly they had encrypted their emails, and okay. the the you know the police weren't able to get in. Can the police force them to open up their emails? That's a good question, and I don't know for sure on that one. I don't know there. I know there have been cases uh, that have gone to federal courts over whether or not someone can be forced to, to put in a unencrypt password. Yeah. their stuff. Yeah, and even you know, putting in a password to unlock your computer or you know do the little uh, you know wh- whatever sort of unlock a swipey thing swipey thing yeah. on your cell phone or put a thumbprint you know it, or a, it's or one a of those, picture verification right uh, I, I I'm not sure how the courts have ruled there was a case recently I think. <laughs> About getting into cell phones, if I'm and please, if I'm recalling correctly, please call in at eight fifty five four fifty free to correct me on this. But I believe the case was that you could be forced to put your thumb on a phone to unlock it by the police because that's a physical movement that they can you know make happen yeah, while you're under too. their custody, but that you cannot be forced to reveal a password to that phone. So, you know, there seems to be some level of protection for that. And besides that, you could always say, I don't recall. You know, oh, I forgot the password. I, I'm sorry. I just can't You're let you in. You're making me too nervous uh, to remember it. Yeah. Now, they may decide to keep you in a prison cell until you can remember the password. But, uh, again, that's all. I think there's some question about what the legality of something like that would be. Regardless, they wouldn't have been able to conduct the investigation and likely have charged him with anything if they didn't have access to those emails. But and even if he would have had two-factor authentication, if he's in their custody, they have his cell phone. And unless the cell phone is locked, they're going to then get the code well, just remember, to be able to put in. They did all this investigation before he knew that he was being investigated. So two-factor authentication is a security measure to keep average people out of your account. Sure, yeah. It doesn't keep the police out. The police just contact Google and say, hey, uh, we need to see in Charlie Shrem's account. And they say, okay. And then they let him in. So the two-factor authentication will never keep the police out of your account. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The only thing that can keep the police out would be PGP encryption of certain messages that are sensitive. More coming up here. What happened with Charlie Shrem? We'll give you his sentence coming up. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. John Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream back pain cream at Walgreens. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. 
For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the US dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got a website. You can go to freetalklive.com. Get interactive there. In freedomscause.com, I want to tell you about a piece of audio theater I took the time to listen to all over two hours of it. It is a well-produced production with names you may recognize from the movies, like Joanne Froggett of uh, Downton Abbey, that's a TV show, Billy Boyd from Lord of the Rings, Skandar Keens of Chronicles of Narnia, and James Cosmo from Braveheart. The quality of this production is very good. The sound effects are excellent. The music, the score, is original and was written for... In Freedom's Cause, it's one of the greatest stories of the struggle for freedom in recorded history. The story of William Wallace. You may remember that name from Braveheart. It's like Braveheart, but historically accurate. Now, there are a couple of fictional characters in this. Essentially, it's uh, the history told through their eyes. And the children in your life will love this. It's perfect for young people. It even has a study guide as an option. And you can go to infreedomscause.com to order with our discount code FTL, like Free Talk Live. Use code FTL to get their family four-pack of CDs for half price. The four-pack is four copies of In Freedom's Cause. You can give them away as you see fit. Go to infreedomscause.com. Use coupon code FTL. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. As we continue here with the news about Charlie Shrem, he's going to prison. He has to report in 90 days to then serve two years of his life behind bars. From what I understand, the federal rule, I believe Mark says that the federal rule for good time is 85%. So he's going to be in there for a good chunk of that two years. Yeah, And uh, the two years is due to a plea deal that was struck in September where he was sentenced today. The feds claimed that he was selling uh, bitcoins in a what they claim was a money laundering scheme. 
Um, but I think to him, it was just selling to somebody who wanted to do business with him. There was a guy who was selling uh, cash for bitcoins on the Silk Road, an underground drug marketplace, and Shrem became aware of that. So Shrem knew who he was dealing with. And he continued to deal with him, and he dealt with him via open emails that were not encrypted. So the feds, when they conducted their investigation, were easily able to garner enough information that they needed to bring the charges and get an easy conviction. He took the plea. And according to Shrem, in his tweet, he announced his sentence and his requirement to surrender in 90 days, saying, quote, Considering I was facing 30 years, justice has been served. What do you think that means? I don't know. It sounds as though he's sort of thanking his oppressors for going easy on him. Yeah, it does sound that way. And and does he feel like he need, that he did something wrong? Does he feel like that, you know, what he did by selling bitcoins for cash or vice versa uh, was somehow a crime because he didn't have all the government paperwork straightened out, that it was somehow— a uh, violation of some other human being's rights? Is this- I don't know. Maybe he, perhaps he was just very fortunate that, you know, by by taking the plea deal that he was able to, you know, go from 80 to, you know, he wasn't, he was not spending his entire life behind bars. I mean, he's, well, what you're saying is he was grateful for that? He, I mean, it sounds like that he, that he was grateful that he had a, re, that he has a reduced sentence. I'm not sure if that means that he feels like he does, he did something wrong. Well, see, the reason I ask that, Danica, is I've been in jail and I've been around sure. people who they do kind of come down on themselves uh, for being in trouble with the system that, you know, oh, well, I was doing something bad and I got caught, even if what they were doing was selling pot or cocaine or something like that, you know, where the other person involved in the transaction was consensually involved. They weren't forcing someone to buy the pot or forcing someone, you know, not stealing or anything like that, but they will still sort of I don't know, is it self-flagellation is the term I'm looking for? They'll still sort of beat themselves up verbally for it and, and you know, engage in their own self-punishment for this when you and I would look at it and say, well, you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't hurt anybody here. There's no justice that needs to be served. This uh, is- I would consider that Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah. Well— well, the sad thing is Charlie Shrem went to he went to Porkfest. I mean, he was at the Porcupine Freedom Festival here in New Hampshire. Um, he was close with a lot of liberty minded people. I don't know what his particular viewpoints are on politics, but you know, I guess I would have hoped for a, a stronger statement. And even, and after the sentence has been delivered, would it be possible? I guess it would be. But would it be possible for if the judge like heard him say, "Well, screw this, I didn't do anything wrong. I, I you know, I'll go to jail because I'm not going to get a bail jumping charge. But I don't feel like I did anything wrong here. I haven't been corrected. I believe you said that when you got out of jail just recently, Daryl, that you yes. have not been corrected. Um, and so if if Charlie Shrem were to take a similar position, like, hey, you know, this is BS. What's going on? What has happened to me? Yeah, I took the plea deal, but that's because you know they had me dead to rights. But I'm not uh, I'm not not proud of what I did. I didn't do anything right. wrong. But here he is, you know, feeling very sorry. Uh, well, and if himself. I understand correctly, he did what they call the Alfred plea, which is not necessarily saying I'm guilty. It's saying there's enough evidence to convict me, Mm -hmm. so I'm just going to go ahead, let them say I'm guilty, and we're not going through with the trial. Well, he could probably be dealing with a lot of pressure from you. His family might be upset with him, and he might have gotten just a lot of pressure from from, from, the justice system. Could a judge come back and hit him with a, like, if he just came out of the court and was like, screw that. How much leeway does a federal judge have on the supervised sentence? Mm-hmm. You know, so he's got three years after he gets out, three years of supervised whatever. Yeah. So could they then say, oh, you know what? You can't leave your house now. 
Yeah, that's a good question. That was my question is, can the judge just automatically resentence uh, somebody? Because I know that when you get sentenced, you can motion for reconsideration as a defendant. And I presume a prosecutor could do the same thing to motion to reconsider the sentence. Maybe that's why he's sort of acting like he's got his tail between his legs and right. is, is real sorry. Because is, is it possible and how likely is it? That a judge will come back after the fact if he's not acting as though he's real sorry for offending the system, if he basically is taking a defiant stance like, yeah, I pled guilty, but I didn't do anything wrong. Could the judge come back and say, all right, well, four years. Is that possible? And how likely if so? I, I don't know if the judge could unilaterally do that, but the prosecution could certainly file a motion to reconsider the sentence. Yeah. And I, I imagine uh, Shrem in court was you know, taking a similar position that, oh, I'm sorry, I, you know, I, I apologize, Your Honor, I'll never do it again, that kind of thing. Right. Which, again, I can't blame somebody for doing something that is a, in a in a mindset of self-preservation if no one else is being thrown under the bus, right? right. So, like, if he's not using, uh, if, if he's not getting a good deal because he's giving up names and putting other people into the system, if all he's doing is he's the only one who's getting thrown under the bus, then, then it doesn't bother me if somebody is apologetic to a judge to try to lower and lessen the the amount of damage on themselves. I just, it, it comes as kind of a shock because I know he didn't do anything wrong, and he must know he didn't do anything wrong so does he really think that he's done something wrong here your thoughts are welcome you're welcome to speculate the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE there's a pretty awful court decision that danica is going to tell us about involving a college age young lady who has sued her dad for not paying for her college did i get that right yeah all right we'll talk more about it coming up here in moments you are welcome to share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE here on free talk live We've been patiently waiting. Waiting while you tried to ignore us. Waiting while you acted like we didn't exist. Waiting for our chance to be taken seriously. The wait is over. GCN is available 24-7 at GCNlive.com. Navigate through news from your favorite hosts and download archives of past shows. Download the app on your smartphone or tablet or visit GCNlive.com for instant access and live streaming. GCNlive.com, the future of talk radio. Now at your fingertips. Hi, I'm John Rainey, Chief Financial Officer of United Airlines, and I'm honored to be the National Chair for the 2015 March for Babies campaign for the March of Dimes. United is a proud supporter of the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more mothers have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Please join us in working together for stronger, healthier babies. Visit marchofdimes.org. It's the Onion Radio News. A crazy man announces plans to stand in a doorway and yell at cars. This is Doyle Redland reporting. Dennis Fife, an Alhambra, California crazy man, held a press conference today to announce his intention to stand in the doorway of the office building at 2600 Kenilworth Avenue and yell at cars all day. At approximately 9.30 a.m. on the day in question, shortly after I finish lunging at dogs, I will proceed to the front steps of the Simmons building and yell loudly for nine hours. The screaming will be broken by a 15-minute fit of rigid catatonia, most likely in the late afternoon. Among the topics Fife plans to address during his nine-hour rant, the ace of diamonds, bookshelves, the man trying to kill him, plastic bags in trees, Trapper John M.D., and papers, papers everywhere. Royal Redland for the Onion Radio News online at theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. Kay Oliver is part of the Tweyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. Toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's the number, 855-450-3733. We talked a lot about Cuba and the de-escalation between the United States and Cuba. That may be some loosening restrictions coming uh, coming soon uh, between the two countries. I think that's, uh, that's good news. You're welcome to share your thoughts on that. We also covered Charlie Schrem. Bitcoin entrepreneur and former advertiser of Free Talk Live that is going to prison in approximately 90 days, where he will then sit for two years. I sent him a tweet this afternoon wishing him uh, the best of luck in hopes that he'll end up in a minimum security facility. Uh, certainly there are worse prisons to be in, and if you're going to be in federal prison, from what I understand, being a, in a minimum security federal prison would probably be uh, preferable. That's generally where they put the white-collar criminals like... Uh, like Charlie Shrimp. Well, uh, the the lady that... Uh, Martha, Martha Stewart. Stewart. That's correct. Um, so, like, one of the things I've heard about minimum security is that some of their facilities, they don't even have fences. You know, that you can just walk off the grounds if if you wanted to, that kind of thing. So maybe things won't be terrible for Charlie uh, in prison, although obviously there are better places that one could spend time. And the real sick part uh, of this story comes at the very end from InsideBitcoins.com. We'll continue with it here in a moment. But coming up, your chance to get Sherry's Berries, the special Christmas holiday bonus offer that is available right now, is going to be up in just a matter of days. Christmas season, uh, the holiday shopping season's almost over. We are less than a week away from Christmas at this point. It's not too late, though, for you to hook up with some amazing Sherry's Berries. Not just for you. You can buy them for people that you love and that you care about. This is a great gift. They're freshly dipped strawberries that are delicious, fresh, juicy, sweet, and irresistible. They pick like the best of the best strawberries for Sherry's Berries. I've never had a bad one, and I've had quite a few. Uh, so go to berries.com. You can use code FTL to get the special savings. It starts at just $19.99. That's over a 40% savings. And you can double the berries for just $10 more. You do need the code FTL to get either of those deals. Plus, if for whatever reason strawberries aren't for you or your loved one, they've got unique treats like their new cake truffles, Christmas cake pops, as well as dipped pretzels. So check out the full selection at berries.com. Christmas is coming up, and this is the only way to get the offer. You go to berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com, click the microphone in the top right-hand corner of the site, type in FTL. You will not be disappointed by these delicious berries. They're dipped in white milk and 
dark chocolatey goodness. They are also covered with decorative swizzle or nuts or chocolate chips, and they are awesome. You won't be disappointed. Go to berries.com and use code FTL to get the deals. It's the perfect gift without the hassle. That's berries.com, code FTL. Charlie Shrem, go into prison for two years for selling people some bitcoins. Uh, through his Bit Instant company, but sort of doing it below the table to some extent with one of his customers who was a seller of cash on the Silk Road. How do we know all this? Well, unfortunately, Charlie did not encrypt his emails. And look, I get it. It's a hassle to do encryption. It's a hassle. Uh, there's some tools out there that make it easier, like CryptoKit. That's a great tool. I like CryptoKit. It makes it a lot easier. But it's still takes a little more effort to do PGP encryption of your messages. Yes. And if you're going to be talking about things that might be considered illegal on your email, you would be wise to spend the extra time necessary to encrypt those emails. Uh, because uh, you know, the feds can go in and hunt around in your email accounts anytime they want to. So keep that in mind. The story here is that he was sentenced uh, to two years plus three years of supervision after he's released from the federal facility. He also agreed, as well as the other guy, uh, Mr. Fiella, who was also sentenced, uh, Robert Fiella from Florida, they agreed to forfeit $950,000 each to the U.S. government as part of their plea bargains. So this isn't just two years in prison. This is almost a million dollars in fines to go to the federal government. I don't know how much money they transferred. The, he's accused of selling over $1 million in bitcoins in this particular scheme. But either way, that money's not going to just like poor kids or anything like that. That's just going to the Justice Department. Right. It's just going to enrich the bureaucrats. In a tweet, Shrem announced his sentence and further said that, quote, on a good note, Judge Rakoff called me a brilliant visionary and said that he admires my brain power. Which is cold comfort in the face of seeing two years of your life wasted away in a federal penitentiary. Yeah. For the judge to make a statement like that just to me adds insult to injury. Because if Charlie Shrem is indeed, and I think he is, I mean, Bid Instant was an amazing idea that you know, we were advertising for a long while on Free Talk Live. Uh, if indeed he is a brilliant visionary and he's a uh, you know, really smart guy, he shouldn't be sitting in a prison cell. You're squandering this man's brilliance. Look, if it's all about, uh, we know the government for the government, it's about the money. They're going to get a million dollars out of this guy if they can. I mean, he's not a poor, poor young man. He's done very, very well for himself. Uh, I, I would actually has. disagree, Ian. It's not about the money. It's about people complying with their arbitrary dictates. Yeah, that's a good point. It's just sad to see such a waste, right? Like the, the money is secondary, yeah. but they want your compliance first. The judge can even see that this guy is a bright guy, and it's just so tragic that he'll be spending two years in prison as a result of this. And I, like I said, I hope he ends up in minimum security. I expect that uh, that he will, and... You know, two years. If you can do two months, you can do two years. It'll it'll pass faster probably than he thinks it will, but it's it's certainly tragic. In other news, Danica, you've got a story. Where is it coming from? Uh, this story is from Yahoo News, okay. and it's been going on for about the last year and a half. Uh, it's a little bit of a flashback here. Uh, a 21-year-old girl sued her parents for college tuition and won. Uh, this started back in about August of 2013 when um, Caitlin Ritchie was suing her parents to pay for her community college and then later for her out-of-state college. So what started is that— So she had already gone to college? She already started to go to college. Okay. Um, her How it started was that she was living with her parents and her parents wanted her to adhere to a curfew, enroll in summer courses— um, and get a job. She did two of the things. She got a job. Was that hold on? Was that in return for paying for her college? Yes. Okay, so this was a deal that they had cut together. Like, yes. okay, sweetie, you do this and this and this, and we'll pay for your college. Yes, and they agree, they were agreeing to pay for her community college, and then I believe certain kinds of you know higher colleges, other not out of state, overly expensive ones. So it was okay. a relatively reasonable deal, I, I think anyway. So um, so she had to get a job. Get a job. And what else? 
uh, have a curfew, so she okay. had to be home at a certain time because she, she she's was, still living at home. Yeah, she's like 18, 19 years old yep. this time. Uh, and then uh, enroll in three summer classes. Okay. She did not enroll in summer classes, and uh, they got into a big fight, and she decided that um, she wasn't going to be staying with it anymore, so she moved in with her her grandparents, her paternal grandparents. Do we know if she got the job? She she had the job. She got the job. Yeah, she did, she did two out of the three things. Okay. Um, she just didn't want to go to call go to college. Uh, she had some internships that she failed to uphold. Um, I I guess she had a drinking problem. She was getting into trouble. She lost her internship. She lost um some scholarships. So she said she didn't want to go to college. Her parents told her well they weren't going to pay for it, and so she, they got into a big Hold on, ordeal. She didn't want to go to college. She didn't want to go. She didn't want to continue going to community college. She wanted to go somewhere else. Okay, yeah. gotcha. She yeah. wanted to go to a real college where yes. she could then drink harder with her friends. Is that right, the idea? exactly. Okay. So she goes and moves in with her paternal grandparents, and her parents call and ask how you know how is she doing? Is she upholding all these things? And they said no. Caitlin can do whatever she wants. Mm. So um, her father um, has said that he thinks that her grandparents have been like encouraging her to sue them for to, wow. for her to. <laughs> Um, go for to get more money to go to college. He found out on Twitter that she was going to be going to Temple University in Pennsylvania, which is sixteen grand a year. Is that cheap for a college? That sounds cheap. Is that cheap for a college? I'm not sure. All right, we'll come back with more here in moments. Eight fifty five, four fifty free because the court has ruled in her favor. Her favor. I want to find out why here in moments, and you can share your thoughts at eight fifty five, four fifty free here on Free Talk Live. There's more coming up. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. For all of you who are inspired to create your own unique holiday cards and gifts. For all of you, there's Vistaprint.com. At Vistaprint.com, creating personalized holiday cards is simple. Choose from hundreds of designs and add your own photos and special messages. And there's 60% off. Plus, personalized one-of-a-kind gifts are also to 60% off. It's our best deal of the season. But hurry, offer ends December 7th. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to Vistaprint.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code RADIO60. Vistaprint.com, code RADIO, the word 60. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain here, but enough time for your call and thoughts. You dial in now, 855-450-FREE, and you can get on the air. 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, you've got Ian. Danica. And Daryl. Danica is telling us about a pretty outrageous-sounding story of a young lady in her early 20s who's now sued, apparently successfully, her parents for not paying for her college, which I guess she thinks she deserves the parents apparently had some kind of a deal negotiated with their daughter wherein she would have to get a job. She would have to obey a certain curfew. Yes. And I think that was primarily and, it. Was there something else? And then uh, sign up for summer classes. This was at a community college. And take summer classes. She decided she did not want to sign up for the summer classes. And she did get a job, but she didn't like the curfew, so she moved into her grandparents' house where there is no curfew. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. She. There were also, and I just saw this. There, were, in addition to the curfew, there were some chores that she had to do. So there was a ah. big fight about blow, uh, a big blow up about chores and the curfew, and she decided she wanted to be there anymore. Now her lawyer is stipulating that she sounds she, like a brat to me. Right. Yeah. Her lawyer is saying that she did not move out. She was kicked out of her house. Oh. So yeah, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot of he said, he said she, she said, said kind okay. of thing. Um, so basically her grandparents have allowed her to do whatever she wants. Her grandparents have said that since she's moved in, um, she maintains a 30 hour a week job. She has, she has A and B grade. She's a good, she's, um, you know, a well, ma a well maintained person. So, um, basically her parents have been divorced and they've been, and they've been divorced for several years. Both of them have moved on, gotten remarried, had other kids, obviously okay. having children, is a fine, you know, has some financial burdens to you. Their kids are expensive. So were both of her parents sued or just her dad? Both of her parents were sued. Okay. Yeah, she listed both of her parents. Her parents were saying that they were willing to help her um, with college tuition, but they they didn't want to pay for her to go out of state because they felt that she didn't need to go out of state. And she, now she wanted to go out of state? She went to Temple University in Pennsylvania. She's uh, She resides in New Jersey or had resided How in New Jersey. How the hell did this result in the decision being made for the the the, the girl in this case? Uh, the court system decided that since her parents uh, are financially well off and she's <sighs> not, that they have to pay for oh her. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is just so crazy. Because she can't, because she, she can't quote unquote can't afford to do on herself which which is there an is expensive. actual excerpt from from a, the decision i'm just curious to get you know what the judge i mean what just because well, your about parents can afford scholarships it? grants well that her parents are saying that she didn't do enough effort to try and get loans scholarships and grants on her own um that, that they're saying it that sounds that like she didn't do a damn thing right <laughs> I mean, she got a job whoopie doo she did nothing according to the agreement with her parents and this court's gonna say just because mom and dad have money that they have to pay for her tuition at any college she wants to attend so with her, no deal no agreement whatsoever she can just go and party all night stay up every night and then her parents have to foot the tab for this so her lawyer says um that mr ritchie her father should be proud of her accomplishments instead of disparaging because he doesn't want to pay for her education it really doesn't matter if caitlin <laughs> okay. was going to temple rutgers montclair state or harvard mr ritchie has made it clear he wasn't going to pay no matter what school caitlin went into uh, mr ritchie and ms mcgarvey her mother Based on their incomes, certainly have ability to pay, and we gave them options to not to pay cash out of hand, and they have decided to not make themselves available to those options. Jeez, 
I mean, that's just crazy. That, yeah. That I mean, this essentially sets a precedent that parents who can afford to pay for college are obligated to pay for their kids' college with or no strings parent, attached. Parents that a court deems are able to pay. Right. And here's this thing. She's estranged from her parents. Like, she hardly talks sure. to her. He found out on Twitter that she was going to Temple U- University. Mm. I mean, you know, how how was she going there if he wasn't paying for it? She probably just got accepted on some sort of like contingent, and t- you know, maybe had, had taken out loans but didn't want to pay those loans, and took her parents to court to pay those loans. That's that's probably what happened. Wow, I'm I, it's just stunning. I mean, this is ridiculous. This, you chalk this up into the category of uh, cases. Well, I was I had a, something in my mind. I just it away but th- there's this isn't the only story where parents have been found to be held responsible for the actions of their kids that's not exactly what's what's going on here but ultimately they're being held responsible for in this case an adult child that's another thing to, to yeah, point she, out here she uh, she is above the age of 18 so so how long after the age of 18 now this is a disturbing precedent in a lot of ways how long after the age of 18 now is a set of parents obligated to pay for the college education of their children and under are there any circumstances under which a court will say no i don't think the parents have to pay i mean how bad are and on how the, the, this relationship's on the rocks well for insurance purposes Someone is a child until the age of 26. That's for health insurance. Under right? federal regulations for health insurance. So I could see that extending to other things. Apparently, it doesn't matter how rocky the relationship is. Th- these guys are essentially divorced from their child and they're still being held responsible. They're divorced from their child who is not a child now, who is now 21 year old adult. And they're still being held responsible for this. And this keep is in mind, crazy. Keep in mind that both parents have since gotten remarried and had children with their new, with you know with their current spouses. Mm-hmm. You know, think you know think about what kind of example this is set for their kids. Their kids are going to be like, well, if they can pay for her college, they can pay for mine. I mean, me yeah. paying for one child's tuition is not so much, but how many other children do they have that are going to think that they're going to be legally entitled? It's to It's stories this too. like this that make me glad I have a vasectomy. <laughs> I'm serious. It, I got my vasectomy back when I was 23 years old, and you know that was more than a decade ago at this point. And it was back then that I'd already heard crazy stories about alimony payments or you know whatever. And I guess alimony's not for kids, but uh, child support payments and all the ridiculous things that some people do to try to lock a a lover into having a kid with them so they can sure, pay for them yeah. forever and. Now you apparently have to pay for your kids beyond when they grow up past 18. And even if your kids hate you, you know, you still have to pay for their college. Even if your kids have broken the agreement that you supposedly agreed to, uh, you still have to pay for their college. It would it would have made sense. The only way this story would have made sense would have been if the parents had come to an agreement with their daughter and the agreement was what it was. You know, you had to get a job. You had to keep this curfew. You had to stay at home and then we'll pay for your college. And if if. Uh, if the parents broke the agreement, wherein if she was staying at home and if she was, you know, with the job and if she was doing the things that she was asked to do, and then the then the parents decided to not pay for college, then it would have made sense for that agreement to be enforced. But that's not what happened here in any shape or form. Yeah, and they were willing to help pay for, you know, a college in that state. She lives in New Jersey. They were willing to pay for college in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. No, she wanted to go out of state to Pennsylvania, where you it's know, probably a better party school. Probably, and the you know, the tuition rates are going to be three, four times I, as high. I don't think Temple's a party school. Temple's one of those All smart colleges people are party schools. schools. <laughs> Temple's a what school? It's a smart people school. I thought you said slut school or something like <laughs> no. that. No, sorry, totally misheard no, what you were smart saying. Smart people. Wow. All right then. Well, so yeah, what you're saying is though, going to a college out of state would cost more. You paid three thousand dollars for a semester. Yeah, I paid school? um almost almost three thousand in so- Idaho. Yes, that is correct. Uh, so that would have so been six grand a year. about six grand a year. Uh, and so she's paying sixteen grand. For she's a paying year. sixteen grand a year for being out of state. Well, meaning her parents are now paying that sixteen grand. Yeah, and her father wrote this. Uh, you know, he wrote a statement after oh, yeah. he had come to terms with it, saying that uh, uh, the law is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, do you realize that if you are married in the state of New Jersey, you are not under any legal obligation to pay for college? But if you get divorced, you are. Please, really? someone tell me how that makes sense. 
Um, it this, doesn't. This is what he has written to Yahoo in response yeah. to this. And Law he, does not make sense in a lot of cases. He says, not only do you have to pay, but apparently you have to pay for any college they want to go to anywhere <laughs> in the country. My ex and I have five kids between us, a mortgage, and other expenses. Why don't they take any of that into consideration? Did they did they not take that into consideration, or did they mm. just did they just look at it and be like, oh yeah, he can totally pay not only for her but for you know the other you know and if he says five kids between um you know him and his ex his ex oh my god you know think of and you know what about the other children he's had with, with his kids. wife yeah. yeah I mean just it's, it's enough to bankrupt him I'm and sure no they they don't take those things into consideration they just look oh well you're making this much money so d- therefore you can afford to pay this. But I've got all of these. Doesn't matter what your expenses are. I I have known people that uh, in the state of Pennsylvania that had child support that they had to pay. That at the end of the week it left them with fifteen dollars. This is such a scary lawsuit because if it can happen this time, it can happen again. And how many more? bratty college kids are now going to sue their parents because they want to or you know want to be college kids oh, well, i want to go to college by my, my parents are saying no they're saying they don't like college right because i don't like college i think college is a scam in a lot of ways i think that uh, a lot of the things that college sells itself on is bs and like the claim that you'll make a million dollars more over a you know lifetime or whatever there's a bunch of bunk out there in the realm of selling kids on college right. oh, and they're sold hard from throughout high school middle school during the whole government schooling process, they're told you got to go to college if you want to be a success. But what if I, as a parent, am morally objecting to the idea of college? Apparently, that doesn't matter. As long as your kid wants to go, a judge is going to back it up. That's a terrible precedent to set and yet another good reason to not have kids. We'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar. That's right. Every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, December 19th, 2014. Silver is trading at $15.92 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,198 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $313. Antiwar.com reports, congressional leaders continue to express outrage at President Obama's announced plan to normalize Cuba relations and are promising to block the effort. Can they? 
Not likely, according to experts who say the president has considerable leeway to curb the embargo against Cuba unilaterally, and Congress has limited options as far as stopping him. That's because even though a number of congressional leaders are lining up against the reproachment, the polls show broad support among Americans, and they probably won't be able to muster a veto-proof resolution. Public animosity towards Cuba has faded over the last half century. Business interests are lining up to cash in as